I helped people purchase over $22 million in real estate. I didn't want to get in because I knew I wasn't going to get my dream house for the budget they gave me anyway. You know, so then when I sold, this is another part they don't tell you. Even though I made six figures, you get to keep that. You don't have to pay the taxes on the first $250,000 of profit. You got to play the game, but you can't let it consume you. Mm -hmm. And that's what the secret that a lot of the elders don't tell you is they just rolled equity. So you got... Over $22 million? How much did you say? I've helped over, I helped people purchase over $22 million in real estate. $22 million in real estate. You've helped people get homes. Um, a lot of the homies in the crew, you always be finding the deals for people, finding different ways. And then yourself as well, you've been copping properties and flipping and doing, getting another house and all the other stuff. So trying to learn about that stuff as well. I think this should be a pretty interesting one, especially from the backstory before you even got to that point. People should uh, be able to learn a couple of things from this episode. So welcome back to the next episode right here, the DNA Show podcast. We're going to be uh, meeting with my boy JQ. I'll let him introduce himself. I'll let everybody say what they want to say about themselves because you know everybody always do the interview they do the whole like this person did this and they did that I'm like no nah, no nah, you tell the world how you want to be seen so i'm jq uh portland oregon born and raised from portland oregon born and raised uh i do a lot of things a lot of uh i know a lot of people so i know dj uh yeah mostly in real estate i mean that's my profession is real estate all my whole career has been in real estate um, and the people I helped buy those houses, mostly of them are residential real estate. And so, yeah, that's, that's what I do. It's just I look at houses all single day, every single day. Sending links, listing <laughs> links to me and I'm sure a bunch of other people as well on uh stuff that fits their lane. So, okay. Now, before all that, you know, we're going to talk about that, but we got to talk about the beginning. I always like to start off with the sneaker journey first. You know, I want to learn how what type of sneakerhead you was back in the day as a young kid. Paint that picture for me, and then we'll get into, you know, the childhood and everything. I'd say I am the entrepreneur sneakerhead in that order. Okay. So I've seen shoes. I've always seen shoes as an asset mm -hmm. because I can always make a dollar off of them. I always have. And so early off when we first started buying shoes, if I wasn't getting doubles... Even the single pair I got could go if I was getting the right amount of money. So this is like you're saying, like in high school. Yeah, like well, but, yeah. Like but this. take me back a little bit farther though. Like, what was the shoe game like before when, like, when you was in grade school, middle school? Like, was you a sneakerhead? Like, oh yeah. What, so how? like, so that like I I had sh shoes growing up, but they were my brother would get them. I had an older my older brother. I'd have an older brother that bought me all the J's, bought me all the the pumps, and bought me everything that was fresh. Mm -hmm. And so I had all the shoes growing up, and then to the point where it was on me when we got to high school, because. I was it was on me to to buy them, which was why I put the entrepreneurship first. Mm -hmm. So that's why it wasn't that I cared more about the money than the shoes that I did. Uh, it was the fact that if I wanted to keep buying more of what I wanted, I had to make money in the meantime. So I couldn't. Some of the stuff I liked, but I didn't like it enough where I didn't I didn't like the money more that I can go buy more with. Right. So okay. So you're definitely rocking kicks growing up. Uh, you know, again, living in Portland, Oregon, it's kind of hard not to be immersed in the shoe culture, uh, especially growing up around in this area. So when you get to high school, is this kind of like your first entrepreneurial type thing, like flipping kicks a little bit? Or is it like, what were you doing? Like, where did you kind of learn your entrepreneurial side? Like, what was the first kind of hustle that you had? I would say at this level, yes. I mean, we sold candy, we've done all the other stuff, but Shoes have always, I mean, in my lifetime, it's always cost a hundred plus dollars as an, you know, when I was buying them. Mm -hmm. And so because it was at such a bigger level, it that was my first entry into the like business world of entrepreneurship, looking at it like, what is my profit on the shoe? Mm -hmm. What's what's the cost gonna be? How do I drive that cost down? How do I make more margins? Can I get multiple? And then it was like having outlets even sell them. Right. And so it, I had to, we it wasn't even me, it was us as a group creating uh an avenue so it was like okay like you got us if you had a shoe you could get the shoes off quick because just of the access of the people you right. had in your circle and yeah it circle. was like one common thing too we all wore like a very similar size whether it was a half up or half down or a full size up or full size down so it was like in our immediate circle it was like oh you got them i got them whatever so and so need them whatever so it was always like hooking each other up and 
and then we know like okay we got to make a little bit of money too yeah it was always a, a cool little circle of everybody like getting the shoes around us uh growing up so now at this time as well like what was your like financial mindset like in the household growing up middle school grade school high school uh i would say there was i didn't know much about investing side of it so it was Mm -hmm. it was more like more money we need money to survive so the basic necessities and then everything after that was you know i thought about it as consumer side of it i didn't you know it was more like you know we just we bought things we bought the shoes we bought the clothes it wasn't it i guess you know just growing up it was like I didn't go without mm-hmm. and that all costs money. And so when you think about that, it's like, okay, it was like, we just, you know, we just bought what we needed and bought what we thought we needed and thought, you know, we, but it was like, it was just, there was no, there was nothing else to tell you that to do other, you know? Right. Like, so it was, wasn't really like, um, from the, I guess the family side of like saying, Hey, we got to invest in this property and oh, like yeah. examples of those things, uh, kind of growing up. So where did you kind of see that, uh, that light switch flip where you're like, yo, I got to like change the path. I want to do something different. Like I want to be the one that switches things up for my, for my next generation. It's really the exposure I got Mm -hmm. like of the friend group and of the just people that I was around. When you, you come out of your environment to those other places, what seems normal to you isn't normal everywhere else and vice versa. And so coming to your house and seeing your house and your family and just, you know, just in everybody else's circumstances, Mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay. So like I knew, and then just seeing like just entrepreneurship, the business, the, you know, Christopher's everything, like just being around our friend group and everybody having a different outlet in some way that, you know, it gave me, it gave me a bigger perspective on life. And so then once I seen it and we were just always with each other so much, it just rubs off on you. There's just right. no way you can't not, you, you can't, once you've been exposed to it, you can try to forget it, but you won't. Right. And then once you get the itch for it, then you, then you have the means and the people around you to help you get there. It's, mm-hmm. it's almost inevitable if it's what you want. Right. So it's like, okay, I would be a fool to, to be able to talk to your dad who's run multiple businesses and does something. It's like, and not get insight mm-hmm. and not be able to like pick his, you know, it's like, so that, that was my thing. It's like, I've always was, I would always come over, but I'm hanging with your parents. I right. want to talk with, I want to understand, like, these are my friends. I get to see them every day, but how does this work? Like, they have to, like, you know, they're not thinking about this mortgage. Right. They're not thinking about this electricity bill. Right. So, like, while everybody was just kicking it, I was typically, like, with the adults, and we were just, and it wasn't even like I was in their business. It was just more like they knew I was inquisitive, and they just they just shared what they felt. And it a lot of that gave me perspective on that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. like finances and income and and what it looks like to buy a house and have right. a house for 20, 30 years and all the stuff. So it was like, I got put in like these, I was getting introduced to other families and how they operated. Mm-hmm. And then it gave me exposure to say, okay, you can shape yours based not off of anybody else's, but a collection right. of what you've been through, plus the other stuff that you like and don't like from other people's. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how I started to see it. Cause it was like, wait, I'm not, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't name anybody who was doing things in the real estate or any of the stuff that I grew up knowing that I could, you know, accessible. Mm-hmm. But then when I got around you guys and your parents and all of my friends, just stuff like that, it was like, oh, okay, so it is possible. So that was, that was the first burden. Say, okay, it's possible. Mm-hmm. Then we had our own set of challenges, you know, right. doing it today versus back then. But it was just to know that, you know, there's people that I know who live in a house that their family owns. Right. Like, and we never owned. Like, until I bought my first house, I lived in rentals, which is right. nothing wrong with that. How many places did you live in, like, growing up? My entire life. Okay, so, so from, you did at least have like the stability of like being in a place for a yeah. long period of time, whether it was a rental or not. Uh, because a lot of people also have like they didn't stay in fifteen different places over X amount of years, and like, and I'm sure that is like even more rough yeah. and harder to even see that. So I feel like that part too is a big factor of like, okay, you've understood some type of uh stability and mm-hmm. then now you like can see the other side and then now it's like okay i understand this and this and then you blend your two worlds so that definitely does i feel like help a lot in that scenario too and on top of that exactly it does and i think even in that little bit of instability between when i went from i lived in my first house from the day like i was born mm-hmm. until freshman year of high school right so yeah. 
16, 15 years, 14 years, whatever. But when we we were renting that house mm-hmm. and somebody bought that house, this is this is how my real estate bug got started and I didn't even know it. And so I was 13, 14-ish, yeah, right around freshman year. And we got a notice saying we had a 30-day notice to move. Jeez. And we've been living in the house. I've been in the house for all of my life. So yeah, 92 to that's then. That's all you knew. My mom was there a little bit before even. And so when we got that notice, the new owners came and said, like, oh, you, you've been here forever. And they were gracious. So they gave us 90 days in a dumpster, right? Okay. But in that moment, I said never again. Right. It was it wasn't like we were being evicted for anything we did. They just wanted to move their family in the house because they bought a house. And it, right. you know, right. and it was a nice house. So I get it. But from my point of view, being the kid with no control, that was what triggered me to say, I don't know how, but I can't allow somebody else to control my circumstances. Right. Even because the craziest part about all of that is that we wouldn't be sitting on this couch if I had did everything I was supposed to do back then, p- potentially. Okay. Who knows how life. So I'll tell you this part. How's it go? So we, we got the 30-day notice. My mm-hmm. mom wrote me. A, so I'm in school. This was, you know, fresh. we was like first term, freshman year. Okay. My mom writes me a note. And says, give this to the school, you know, let them know we're going to be moving or whatever. And this is our new address. I don't give them the note. The whole first term goes by. And I just don't, I don't know why. I just didn't give it to them. Like, I'm not leaving. So, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and so, and the craziest part is we moved closer to the school. Right, right. And so, and so I, like, December rolls around. Mm-hmm. My mom's like, well, you give them the note? I'm like, oh, yeah, I got you. And so I go give them the note. And by this time, the whole first semester is over right. or first quarter or whatever. And so they go, oh, well, since you've been here this long, even though you moved outside of the school district, you can stay if you like, mm-hmm. or you can go to Jeff. And I'm like, I'll stay. I'll stay. But, but <laughs> had I gave it to them earlier, right. they may have just been like, okay, well, you could just transfer to your neighborhood school because you just got here. Right. You don't have any grades yet. You yeah, don't have- we would have literally like, okay, wait, wait, let's rewind for a second. So- this is freshman year you're talking about. Yeah. We actually played on the same football team for a brief period of time when we were younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we kind of didn't realize it because I was I was playing quarterback at the time. We had all the homies on there. It was like the it was like two teams in the hood that everybody played on. It was like us and the Panthers, right? It was like the Warriors and Panthers. So I played for the Warriors. Everybody was cold on both teams. Uh you played for a little bit and then later we met again in high school because I was going to a different school and then we were talking about different stuff who we knew because we're like bro how do we know all these same people but we like they don't know each other and then we're like we played for the same team for a little bit so like it had all came full circle for us as freshmen in high school and then remember the day I was like bro you should come over let's hang out and then like we were just at the house watching what was it what was the show that we were watching remember the dude like fell and it was like Remember they kept crashing and stuff. It was like the it was on MTV. It was, it was like, like the what 15 the t- years ago, twenty years. How long ago? Remember was that? it was like a hundred ways to die or something. I, I it know, was like yeah, some yeah, random yeah, thing I, like that. But yeah, so we just go to the go over to my house on some random stuff and then just hang out because that was always my thing. It was just like I meet new friends. Like I pull up, my dad will make the judgment of them. Like <laughs> all right, this is a good person to be around or not. <laughs> and I'll be like okay, and then yeah, it kind of all just happened that way, but. It was funny how that all came about and then went full circle. And then that, that's why you're saying, like, you might have went to Jeff because I was in a similar uh, scenario as well because I was in a Japanese program. And they were like, if you drop out of the program, you have to go to Jeff as well. Yeah. And I was like, hell no, I'm staying in the program. <laughs> they were like, you got to do it for at least two years. So that's why I finished. I didn't. I stopped the Japanese program, I think, after junior year. Gotcha. I didn't do it. He's like, year. I'm far enough in here. Yeah, right? I was like, I'm already in. But then when <laughs> I got to senior year, I had, like, no credits left. So I was like. What's the point of even taking these classes? I didn't even, I needed to take like one or two classes just to be eligible for gotcha. football. So I was like already pre-graduated. So anyways, off topic a little bit, but yeah, that's crazy how that all happened. We were both like on so, the line. So we, we both could have been at Jeff and we you probably could have been, we we been, <laughs> been both our stories. That's so wild. So, okay. So you're kind of seeing that you're uh, staying at the new spot uh, and what happens now? You're like in high school. Yeah. And that's where, that's where the entrepreneurship took off. So, I mean, I had that feeling after, you know, I, I don't want this to happen again. Mm-hmm. And then we got to high school and then that's, that's when the countdown packs start dropping. And mm-hmm. that's when all the, 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 you know, 
where Jordan just ran on his run. Yes. So, what was that? 06 to 2010 was a crazy run. It was a crazy run. Made a lot of money on shoes. But that's neither here nor there. No, no, no. But <laughs> tell them about the CDP pack, bro. Oh, bro. Which Come one? on, bro. You got to tell them the story. Which which one? The one the, the one with that the snow. snow. Oh, the one with the snow. <laughs> tell them the story, so, bro. It's it's a cold. When I say cold winter day, I mean it's snow. Snow. The snow gotta be. I'm probably exaggerating, but two and a half feet thick outside. Nah, bro. It was a straight up blizzard in Portland. Like it was crazy. And so I'm like, and so we all we go. The the eleven twelve pack is coming out, so we have to get it. There yeah. is no like, it's not up for debate. So we're all and we all wear similar sizes. So your friend is only a friend until you get to the doors of that building or wherever it's for sale or whatever <laughs> everything after that you we don't connect until you meet somebody in line that you see him back in line right. or you get back to the car with or without it it just you just it's every man for themselves. and so we go where we went to lloyd center we tried at multiple spots we went to the employee store yeah, yeah. and we went to lloyd center and then couldn't get i couldn't get and anywhere. we tried at the nordstrom's too didn't which one did you did you get one from the, either one of those my nike plug oh, okay. came through they gave me a pair they gave me the pack uh, like two weeks after they came out. See that so one? So I got that one, and then I hit at uh, the mall, and then somebody got one from the ES and sold it to me that same weekend of the release. So I was like, I was in a great position. I was like, okay, I got leverage. I got a two thirteens and a thirteen and a half. I still got the thirteen and a half because it was like a Jordan size. I was like, it was dope. But yeah, go ahead, keep going. See, that wasn't my story. <laughs> so when I struck out everywhere, <laughs> uh, one of the homies hit me. When I was talking, I was asking everybody, like, who got one? And so my homie, I find through the grapevine, I think he hit at the ES. And so he was like, yeah, bro, you, you can get it, bro, right now for 300 And the pack was 310 I believe. Right. And so I'm like, wait, I can get it for under retail and I can and I can get it the same day it drop. Like, right. bet. It, so then I'm thinking like, Okay, how is this gonna work though? So he does, the craziest part, he doesn't even live far from DJ. He didn't at the time. But it, that's it, but, still but like it was probably like two miles. Not well. I think it was like I don't know. It was, yeah, it was probably like a mile and a half or something like that. Yeah, two miles. Okay, so yeah, you're right. And so let's say it's even a mile and a half, which is a it's a regular walk. You know, you can get there in twenty minutes or so. Not today when it's a blizzard. It was a this crazy day. blizzard. So I call him. He's like, I'm back at the house. He's like, uh, he's like, okay, yeah. He's like, I'm back at the house. I'm like, okay, I'll be there in a second. Thinking, I'm like, you know, it ain't that far. I told them, yeah, I'll be back. I'm finna walk there. Because it got worse. Because cause we were all over at my house, all the homies. Like, we were just over there because we're like, it's about to be a storm. We're bunkering down. We're kicking it over at my house. We're going to play video games. You already know my parents is going to have some food. So we were just eating good, playing video games, kicking it. And then he gets the call, and he's like, I'm leaving. Or we're yeah. like, where are you going? It was, like, but mind you, it was the snow got thicker since we were out earlier, so I didn't realize. Didn't you have shorts on? No, no, no. I remember. I didn't have shorts. Not that good. That was when I came back, but no, not, not walking okay, there. Okay, So when I was going, I was like, I was like, yeah, I could just walk there. And there's a city bus that actually runs parallel, like there and right back. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. I'm like, if it gets bad, I could just hop on the bus. Yeah, because the, and the bus only runs like once every hour or two hours in the snow. So you got to really time this. So I'm I'm like, all right, I'm, it's cool. I'm going to just, I, I ended up catching a bus for like two blocks, but the rest, I walked the entire way in the snow. I get there. I get, I go to his house. He opens the door. He has 11, 12 pack. I'm happy as can be. I'm like, can I get a bag to carry it? He gives me a clear trash bag. Like clear, I like I could see through it clear. Snow's still coming down, so like you're getting wet. Like you want to protect the box without a doubt. And also, I'm like I don't know. I just know how long it took me to get here. And I'm like, if I can't catch this bus, I don't know how long this. Like so, right. I'm just planning for all whatever could happen. So now, I'm carrying an 11, 12 pack in the snow in a garbage bag, in two feet of snow trekking along. I'm worried about hypothermia. I'm worried about getting robbed. I'm worried about everything you can think of at this Bro, point. <laughs> he was gone like it felt like the whole day. It it was a journey. It was probably really like two hours in all reactuality. Because I even think like on then on the way back, so I got back to the main street where the city bus was running. I'm like, okay, let's see if I can time it. 
it was down the street. Mm. So I had to run a block and a half in the snow. That don't a block and a half is not far. But when you're carrying this pack on your back, you know that's two pairs of shoes. Mm-hmm. So on your back in a bag, you and you like you're not trying to be seen because you got this clear bag of Jordans. <clears throat> and everybody knows what the CD pack looks like at that time. CDP pack. And so I ended up running and then I caught up with the bus and it was only going to take me like a few stops, but that saved me like 35 minutes, but that's all how I got. And then I ended up getting back with the pack and I was happy. And then and I, I sold the 12s anyway. So. You, sold the 12s. <laughs> but see, you sold the 12s, but you wore those, you wore those playoff 11s like a lot. I still wear them. And you still wear them <laughs> to this day. And I think that's the dope part about shoes too. Like you can create memories with sneakers and have those things like that. And it was like when the breads came out again and again, you're like, I need to get a pair. I got to re up type situation. So I love how uh, that stuff you know plays out. So you you put in work. You're you're gr- you're hot, gr- <laughs> I can't even speak. You're grinding and hustling for sneakers and uh, doing what it takes. And then you're flipping kicks. It's funny because all the hottest releases. He'd be like, yeah, if I get two, I'm keeping one. But if I only get one, I'm selling it. Like, every time. We'd be like, bro, this is a grail. He'd be like, I'm selling it. And he, he would always be telling me, like, sell your whole collection. You know what you could do with the money? He he literally still tells me that to this day. He's like, you know what you could do? And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I just want when, to keep it. When he sells the collection, remember, I was a part of the reason why. <laughs> he's, he's the reason why. Yeah, no, he really be in my ear about that. So, okay. Now... You're going through high school, and who in your family has been to college before? In my immediate family, at that time, no one. My, I had. I mean, they've. I had some aunts that had went later in life, and I had an older sister that had was going, but mm-hmm. no one. Not not anybody in the so, house or nobody I knew. <clears throat> what uh? Because you went to college. Mm-hmm. What uh? What kind of like made you be like? I need to go to college or I got to do that. Was it more for like for your family namesake type thing for yourself? Was it because there's a lot of people that can go and get bread without, you know, just immediately out of high school and they don't need to go to college or whatever. A lot of different scenarios. So I'm sure a lot of people watching this or listening to this is like, man, I'm in a scenario where should I go to college? Should I not? What should I do? And how did you make your decision on that for going to college? So college was interesting because I'm like, you know, most people, they like, they got multiple choices and some got scholarships and all of that, that Mm -hmm. they got to to pick through. I actually applied for one school and one scholarship. Mm -hmm. And so if it didn't work out, there was no like. So you're, so you're like, if I don't get this, I'm going to just find a job. No, I see. That's the thing. I don't know if I had so much faith in getting it. Or or what? Because I I just didn't think about an alternative. Like you was I, like, this is the only option. I pretty much. I, I think this. I think when I because I was so confident in me, I wasn't confident in getting it because it was the first year it was ever happening that way. Okay. And so I who knew what was going to happen, but I just knew what I you know I was confident in me and conveying me at least. And mm-hmm. so, but yeah, that was my. It was like no plan B. It okay. was like you know when you show up, you like if I leave here and they don't get this, it's like. So, okay, so you apply for a scholarship for college. And yep. what does the scholarship entail? So it's a leadership scholarship. And what it did was it, it uh, like, so people, kids throughout the community were, like, nominated and some, you know, just from different community members and everything mm-hmm. to apply. Uh, and the scholarship, they have it all throughout the Northwest, so Washington schools and Oregon schools. Mm-hmm. And uh, essentially what it does is is you can apply for the scholarship, and it's like a leadership initiative. Mm-hmm. And then you get in the program and then they just kind of foster the leaders and it create, you know, it's like it's they see something within you. And then you also build from that to then go back and impact the communities on the back end based okay. off of what you've been afforded kind okay. of situation. You impacting the communities now? I would say so. OK. okay. <laughs> well, isn't it crazy how we'll get into it later, but how that kind of like played a factor into what you did what you do now and the things you've done over the past years because you kind of had to be resourceful find a way to get essentially like a loan but it's a college you know scholarship and just like when it comes to lending there's a lot of different options and you find the one that fits for you so you found the scholarship that fit for you that you were like I can make this happen and then you made it happen and it went through yeah, yeah and I would say I think well, God made it happen. I was just, you know, in the in the being there. True, but uh, I would say what what happened on top of that was like 
when I was going through that process, how you said like, you know, who did that around you, like school and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. I was, I was in uncharted territories already. So there was no like, you know, you can't, who am I having a conversation with anyway? You know, right. like, I, so for me, it was like, okay, if I'm here and this already feels foreign, everything after this is going to be even more because somebody has to go be first and mm-hmm. figure it out. So it was like, I would say I felt like I was uh, forging a path to, fi- you know, to go get in other environments to to learn more to be able to bring it back. So mm-hmm. I think that's how I was looking at it. It was like, okay, like, I don't know. Like, when I went to school, I didn't know anybody, like, as far as just, like, the people at the, at the school. I didn't. So it was like everything was new again, obviously, like every other school. But it was, for me, more it was like, it's, it's already going to feel weird. So might as well just adapt to that and then see what you can get from it. Mm-hmm. And so I was looking at it like, okay, no, you know, I don't have any people that can relate outside of a, our friend group or the people that were in school. But it was like, so it was, it was all new for us. I mean, everybody was going through it at the same time mm-hmm. and we all had our own experiences, obviously, but it was like, okay, you know, you still, no matter what, even though we're all in school, everybody's going to look differently. And so I think it was kind of figuring out what that looked like. Because I didn't, we didn't have anybody that we could, you know, immediately that we could talk to who mm-hmm. just got out of college. I mean, we knew people who were in college, but it was like, you know, they were either really close to it or they really far removed. Right, right. So it was like in our era of college, it was different than other eras. So it's like, mm-hmm. I think we had to go in there and figure it out on our own. And then, yeah, it wasn't. I mean, like we had social media and stuff too, but it wasn't near like especially with TikTok now and all the <laughs> stuff that's on there. Like that wasn't even a thing Man, like that. You know what I'm saying? It was like at all. You had like your friends and family on there, and it was kind of like that was it. And you seen a couple of people that you knew that was on like TV. I remember like starting my media. I started my Instagram page in college, and I remember my first post. And it was nothing like what it is today. I'm just thinking like when it was Grimm could only be pictures, and then they mm-hmm. added the video and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But it's like, yeah, it we we got the it evolved as we evolved. Mm-hmm. So like it like really a lot of this new technology came about while we were in the transition to becoming like either kids to adults or we, you know, like, mm-hmm. so we got to see the whole, you know, not many people can say they've seen six or seven game systems come out and then, you right. know, be there. And so right. it's like, we got the, we got the better of all of it. Not better, but that, that was just our era. Yeah. We and, get to understand like a hundred percent both sides and be able to actually use these tools and that's my, that's the le- <laughs> that that right there is my biggest point of leverage is because we were we're, on, we're in the middle mm-hmm. and so we have great wisdom above us and then we have the ones below that don't know mm-hmm. and so then i feel like we become bridges so it's gotcha. like that's that's how because we it's just where we were born just that time so it's like you know i know elders who can't send an email right i know a kid who could send who could submit a tiktok send an email and all that before bro you know it's like and so it just, but living in between, it's like, okay, you may not do that, mm-hmm. but what do they know that you don't? Right. And so I've tried to learn both sides. And then it, it's like, an, it's like, okay, I could show you some stuff that, you know, not going to make sense up to you right now. Cause this has been your whole life. Mm-hmm. And then I'm talking to the younger people the other people who just don't know. They don't even have to be younger. They're just, you know, they may just never experienced it. And then I'm like, this is going to seem different because you've never, you know, so it's like, they're both coming from polar opposites. Right. And then we get to live in the middle and figure out how, you know how we maneuver right for whether sure. that's being in certain business or if that's just in certain helping out and being an assistance mm-hmm. so that's something that you do is like bridging the gap on a lot of things when it comes to those or just like finding things that people don't understand and finding ways to like explain it to them in the best way and then with that it makes you more versed more well-rounded as a whole and having these conversations with different people so for somebody that wants to be able to like bridge the gap for others or uh, be more well versed in a lot of different categories like what would you say is a key factor to them like gaining confidence and talking to different people or like getting in the right places to talk to the right people like what would you say were some things that you did over the years it's a hundred percent not a hundred percent that was a, that's, that's a little drastic <laughs> it's a large majority of percent is to putting yourself in uncomfortable environments mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff i got i wasn't comfortable in the moment whether or not i'm not not even like my safety or any of that stuff but more like it's a, it's foreign and so typically as humans we go with what we're comfortable with what we're used to what's our habits and all of that and so all of the stuff that i've ever been able to do it all came in uncomfortable times mm-hmm. or from or stem from or you know something so it was that was really the cheat code. And then when I, and then if, to be able to do it, all you have to do is do it long enough. Then you get to sit back and look at what you've been through. 
Mm-hmm. So you just take what you've been through and it's not, so nobody's going to have that path. But then you say, okay, you analyze what you mastered and what you're great at. You give that back. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you got to live life anyway. So you live life in a direction, get really get as good at that direction because you feel like that's what you're good at in life. And then you go back and help people in that area. But you can't do it until you've lived it out. Right. So like a lot of this generation thinks because they've done it once or they can see it, you know, it's like there's a tutorial on TikTok, how to do it and all of that. <laughs> it can definitely be done. Right. But there's something to be said about sustainability right. and like seeing it, you know, it, one year, it could be luck. Two years, luck is running out if it's still up. Mm-hmm. If you go three to five years, okay, now you have something. Right. And most people aren't there yet or don't stick it out long enough to get there. And so it's like, and, and even if you're doing bad, if you into one year, it's not, that doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, and so it's like two years, you could still be figuring it out in two. I mean, three is, there is no timeline for how long it takes to figure it out, depending on what area you're in. Mm-hmm. But you just have to understand that if it's what you feel like the calling is, then it's, there is no timeline on it. Mm-hmm. And then that's, that's where I took, that was another thing, taking a timeline off of what I thought should happen, right. when it should happen, how, how much and all of that. Just eliminating that pressure on yourself. Like, you, I got to be this point in two years and I got to be at this point by the end of the year and hit all these deadlines. It's like, yeah, you want to get to these places, but there's so many other factors that can cause the trajectory to like go up quicker or go man. down faster or whatever. You know, so, life be life. And it yeah. ain't that, man, it ain't, that's it. Like you, you get, oh, don't get me wrong. You need a plan. You need to sit down, you map stuff out and all of that. But in all of that, just know it's not going 100% to how you feel like it should if it's big. If it's small and these are my new tasks and you could do it easy, yeah, you can do that. Mm-hmm. But when it's like what well, we're, you know, we're playing for and how big and the scale and all the stuff that you know we just see, it's like there is no, you know? Yeah, like, so that's uh, it's actually funny because uh, Alexis and I yesterday were talking about like her next steps and the things she needs to do. Uh, and so for me, I always go through and I like, I talk about everything that needs to be done. And then for her, she's like, it's overwhelming. It's too much. Like, I don't want to talk about all this stuff. Let's just pick a thing. And I'm like, well, it's hard to talk about a thing. If you don't lay it all out, everything that you can possibly think of, that's uh, the factors to this, to that, to that, because then you're like working in circles. Yeah. And that's the hard part. Like a lot of people work in circles because they're like, oh, I want to do this. This is what I want to do right now. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. But you got to remember, you got to do X, Y, Z before you get that. Just like you need to get your credit right before you get the house to get the loan to then be able to have equity later to do this. Da, da, da. Like you got to take the steps to go along it. So it's like understanding that stuff is key. And I think a lot of people got to realize like, yeah, you got that timeline. But also remember, there's a lot of factors in between that that could change some things. And sometimes it's out of your control. A lot of it, too, is like stretching your end goal. So some like let's say you go to a task and you make Today's partner is shopdnashow.com. Are you tired of wearing low quality gear? I completely understand. I made a personal mission to go out and find higher quality stuff and give it to you guys at an affordable price. And not only because of that, I have to wear this stuff every day and I don't want to be wearing cheap clothing all the time. So I want to make sure that you guys know about it and are understanding that we have a lot of cool stuff coming out as well. Hit the link down below or pinned or wherever it may be. It's going to be shopdnashow.com. There's new drops every single month. I'm excited to see you guys in the gear. And now let's go ahead and get back to the podcast. This task, the end goal, Mm. or you're not thinking past this. All you see is that in the moment, then that becomes... The world, your world because everything's into that mm-hmm. but when you say my end goal is here this is a step in that and i know once i complete this but with, you know there's more steps to come mm-hmm. then it does it's not as big because you know you have more to do mm-hmm. but you but most most times we tend to get in that first realm or just people in general get in that first area and get really good at it and then either one forget about the part that comes after right or it's like i'm so comfortable here right now I'm not really trying to be the small man on the totem pole or a woman on the totem pole, you know, in this next area. Right. And so I think that's another part is like sometimes our goals aren't not big enough, but they're not big enough. Mm-hmm. Because then, you know, if, if you have, you know, it's like if it's big enough, it's going to have it's going to force you to grow to get it there, mm-hmm. which then you're just going to be, you know, getting better at everything you're doing as you know, it's going to take time. Right. But it's like I think that's it. It's like sometimes it's like, OK, 
I have some audacious big goals that I want to accomplish and get it done in life, right? Who knows if it'll ever get done, but that's the plan. Like, right. that's what I'm, you know, I'm, I have these, so it's like, okay, well, is the stuff I'm doing now, a, the bottom line, is that going to affect that? And, oh, yes, it is. Okay, right. and then on the back end, it stops you from a lot of stuff too. You're <laughs> like, every opportunity ain't your opportunity. Right. And so like, and I, and it, just us, because we know so many, we're so versed, so many people and we're so versed, we can do it when our eyes close. Mm -hmm. We can make a deal. We can do whatever we need to do. And it's just, it's really easy, but we do it so often that we don't realize there's still some work in that, mm -hmm. which I'll tell you, know, and so for me, it's like, I'm looking at it like, okay, how do you, you know, like, like people have to look at the scale back, you know, it's like focus in this one area instead of like, you know, like multiple different things. Right. Like just because you can don't mean you got to, yeah. or at least right now. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that I'm another part of it was like, okay, like, Stop doing so much, right. you know, just across the board, like they're telling people like, okay, don't do a lot. Yeah. Focus it in. And, and that's, they, yeah, exactly. And it's like, same thing, like understand that all this needs to be done, but you don't have to do it all right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understand how it needs to be done, figure out the order of operations and then start knocking them down one by one because that's where you're like, oh, if I put 10% energy in this and that and this and that, and, that, and you're like spread thin. You're not giving it your all on the things that need to get done in the highest priority and understanding like, what do I need to actually do today? Like what needs to be done to move the needle forward in the correct direction? Because a lot of people move this way and they don't move this way. They, and for the people that are listening, they move sideways instead <laughs> of the people that move vertically or at an angle, you know, up. So that's a big thing too, like, because there's always a lot of tasks. We can always have a lot of things to, you know, if you ever want to be something, there's always something to be done. Like, it's never not going to be something to be done. But at the same time, it's like, you got to pick and choose, like, what needs to be done now and what needs to be done later. And another thing that I had to get over and a lot of people need to get over is busy work being considered, like, the task. Yep. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Because you have so much to do, you could take that and make five tasks in one of them, right? So make a whole bunch of small stuff. Mm -hmm. None of that's moving the needle, but it's keeping you occupied to make you feel like you're busy. I did something today. Yeah, and so right. and don't get me wrong. It, some of this stuff all has to be done, yeah. but it's if you come at a goal and you make these small, don't get me wrong, start where you need to. And if you need to start with small tasks to build up to get there, that's how everybody starts. Mm -hmm. But when you're when you're trying to make this, this shift and go to this next part, that's not going to move the needle. Right. And it's like, okay, well now, you know, like, okay, well now I, these small tasks got to get done. And maybe what it looks like is you allocating that to somebody else. Right. Maybe you're saying these have to be done, but this, this is something else that needs to be done too. Not more important because they both need to be done, but maybe you're not the person that needs to do the first smaller ones right. or, or you in integrate that throughout the day. <laughs> we we're literally just having this conversation yesterday with my wife. That's what I'm saying. I said the same thing. I said, I'm going to map out everything for you and then tell me what you want to do what you need to do, and who can do it. Because once you start figuring that out, you realize, like, I want to do these things no matter what. I need to do this, but somebody else could do it. And then other was like, who can do any of these tasks? And then how can I allocate those? And what can I afford to pay for something like that? And if you're not in a position to pay for it, yeah, you got to put in that work. A lot of people forget. <laughs> you still got to grind. Like, and again, you could do a lot of busy work, but at the same time, we had to put in a lot of work before we got to the position where we could say, hey, we're going to pay somebody else to do this type of thing that we need to get done. And most times, you're doing it all by yourself, which is good. Mm -hmm. I feel like you have to do that to understand, to get a good understanding of what it's worth for you to pay somebody to do it. Yeah. So, like, for instance, you don't like, let's say you don't like cleaning your house. You work, you got a long day, you got a, you, you just grown. You don't feel like cleaning. Right. You want to hire a cleaner and you say, okay, well, it's going to take me six hours to clean my house. Is that worth this $200 I'm going to pay to have it cleaned? Right. When you start to, you, it becomes really simple. Not saying that the $200 is nothing, but it's when you say, okay, I would rather pay myself $200 or I would rather pay them. Right. But you at least know it's an option. Yeah, and then, like, and, what can I do in that yeah. six hours that can make me more money or move the needle forward to, for something that's going to make me 20 times the value or whatever? Or what can you get a peace of mind? Yeah. What, do you need a six hour getaway? Right. Do you need to unplug and not clean, not do it? Like, have you just been like so many people right now? I think because it's just how expensive it is. 
they're overworked. Mm -hmm. And so because you're working all the, all these hours and all of that, and you have, you know, you want to live a life outside of work, but you want to also be responsible. Yeah. You're trying to find that fine not work business, whatever that is. And then, so it's like, I think some people, you might just need a break. So I think sometimes, although it, they say like, you know, you, you're on your, you keep your budget and everything, but maybe you take some of your fun money and allocate that towards making your life easier. Free time. Like, you yeah. know, like most people, I, I, most of my homies, I know they got a shoe budget. Yep. They know what they, they know what shoes they finna cop. They know every pair of shoes you cop is another thing that you don't have to do. If you didn't, I'm not saying that you got to do it this way, right, right. but it's just something, you know, it's, that's something else that could be moving a needle in another direction. Whether or not you were saying, okay, I'm going to invest this money into something else. I'm going to invest this to get my time back and have somebody else do something for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to invest. I'm, I'm just going to not, you know, like it's, there's, we make we make money for what we want to make money for. So it's like if you made these a priority and saying, okay, this is what I don't want to do, then when the time comes and you're in position to, you spend the money. Right. But it's like most times we don't think about it. There's so know. much stuff, bro. I'm so thankful and grateful for the position I'm in now because it's just so many things where I just feel like just pay somebody else to do that shit. Like I'm good. Well, yeah, but but even the, the I think <laughs> and I just love it because there's times where I'm like I just don't I don't want to do that or I just need to chill or whatever. But, like, but every single thing you don't want to do, you've done a million times already. Right. So it's right. You've earned the point to say my time and money. I know the difference in this situation and it and it balances out. And so, yeah. but most people don't. Because most times, if you don't have the money, all you do is give all your time to that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, but but like then, so like that's the difference though. Because you've done it, like you, you don't have to clean the hot tub if you didn't want to. But right. it's, you know, so it's those kind of things where it's like, you've done it so much. You know exactly how long it's going to take. You know how much, what is going to, you know, it's like, right. you're like, okay. And so like, that's how you choose to spend your money. But that, you know, everybody has a way to choose to spend it. Right. And so like, and people be like, why would you, you that's lazy and all of that. One, you're stimulating the economy. That's like that's jobs. Yeah, and you're helping people. You know, somebody ha they they have to clean somebody. They have to do something. You know, like yeah. they're in business to make money, and so because you want to give them money and like and so that's a whole another conversation. But it's like I think that's the biggest part. Is like because you've done it, you've mastered it, and you know it. Or even if you did master it, you like that ain't my strong suit. I don't know it. I'm paying somebody. Right. You know enough. You know yourself well enough. And I think that's the thing. Most most of us don't say. You know, we think we can do it all. Right. we're invincible we're superman we're you know it's like but in reality it's like nah you can't and then you're like okay well what can i you know like how yeah. you i like how you broke it down because that that's real like what can i do what can somebody you know it's like right. and that's the biggest part but it's like everybody's not that fortunate of course but when you're budgeting this is what you could build a budget for yeah so, so this may not be your current circumstances but know that if this is something you do desire Let's say you want to travel and you don't want to tend to your house while you're gone. They have people to house it. They have people that check it. And it's like Man. those all those things that you can do. And you know? it's it's also of like, like you said, seeing it's possible because like I have friends that are like content creators and they go, they haven't grocery shopped. They don't even do the, you know how they'd be like, oh, just order the groceries, have it delivered. They don't even do the grocery shopping. <laughs> they don't do this stuff. And their cabinets are always stocked. They have a lady who goes through their house, uh, I think it's like once a week or twice a week, and she keeps everything straight. The kids are taken care of. Um, groceries are stocked. They know what they want to eat already. It's already set, laid out. They just get the AOKs, put it in the group text. Like all the, the laundry, all the services, all the extra things that you would like allocate your time to like, let me find somebody who do a laundry service. Let me find somebody to do this. She goes out and finds those people. She does the stuff. She says, hey, this is what it is. She's already got the, like, the card, mm -hmm. so she just sets it up like... So for me, I'm like, I'm not at that point 100 percent yet, yeah. but I'm like, now I know it's an option, and that, that's it. Like it's it's the exposure, and then you're like, okay, I got to get uncomfortable to get this kind of money. You know, exactly. it's like whatever, whatever. Yeah. I, you How want, much do I need to make a month to get like, here? What I got to <laughs> like, do? Like. And, and because you know it's going to force you into an uncomfortable place, because obviously you're not there yet. So yeah. you're like, okay, if I'm not there. Then whatever I'm doing is good, but it's just not enough to fit that type of lifestyle that I know that's out there. Yeah. And it's like, and yet again, that's everybody doesn't want that. And some people don't want it because they don't know it exists. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, you may you may hear this and be like, I would never. Right. And then you go like, and get a taste of that. <laughs> and then, but then and then it's like, but it's like we normalize certain things just because of tradition. Mm -hmm. But who said those traditions are right or wrong? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that's the difference between us. We've 
we don't accept what the, everybody gives us as of what it has to be. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, that doesn't work for us. Ah, that one wasn't it either. So it's like, just because, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nothing about us is traditional. Right. Like, we could, like, you know, like, yeah. you know, like, you're, like our day don't, and it's not, and it's not even just, in, it's just us as people. But that's another part of it. It's like, because we've seen so much and you've been in these, you've been in these houses and you're like, it's not even on no like Butler May type. It's just more like well, yeah, a convenience. It's, it's, it's like a, it, because it, they, they, uh, they, you build a strong relationship with this person that is, you know, coming into your house. And this is something that they want to do. Like they chose to make this their profession. So it's not like you're forcing some random person to go do this and you're holding them by the ear or anything yeah. like they want to help and serve and and protect and all those things for other people's families and homes and kids and stuff like that so it's dope to be able to find those right people and get in those scenarios where now not only are that but you're helping somebody create a stability uh and their income and all those different things as well and like you said stimulating the economy all those things so it's dope when you create that team around you and then you say hey I need a referral from my friend. They're doing this. What you know? What site do I go to? What what do you have a, another person that on your team or whatever um, that's aligned with that? So it's I don't know. It's just dope, like how it all plays together and it makes your life easier, their life easy, easier. And I just like it all, really, honestly. And see, I, I think another part is though. Remember how we talked about like seeing the bigger than what you're in right now. Right. So because you see those steps beyond you, it's easy to to do the work now. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you're like, all right, they had to do the work to get there, to be able to mm-hmm. afford this for themselves. I have to do it my my own way, but I can still enjoy the luxuries at that level when I've earned it because of the work that I put in. Right. And so, you know, like there's more than what I'm doing now. And it's because you've been around it. And now you're like, okay, I can show up. I know that, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this isn't always going to be what I want to do or feel like doing or any of that stuff. But because the bigger goal is bigger than what you, you know, just this level, because mm-hmm. you you could literally cool it. Like you don't ever have to buy another shoe. I might you retire next like, week. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like you, could, <laughs> bro, you literally wouldn't have to do no. Like you got your houses, you got the, you got everything. Like, yeah. like I'll give you a case in point. If you were traditional, you would be done by now. Yeah. You got the car. You have your wife. I'm you got the. You call it, but that's what. I'm, but I, that's that's the, because of. And yet again, what you're playing for isn't what everybody else wants. But because it's what you want and you're not letting that, you know, anything deter you outside of it may change because of more exposure. So you might see even more along the way and be like, oh, okay, now I'm adding that to the pot because, right, you know, right. and so you, you can always add, mix, rechange, take stuff out that doesn't work. But because it's always bigger than what you're currently doing, it's easier to go. Not easy. It ain't nothing easy about it, right. but it's easier to keep showing up when you don't feel like Definitely. it. Definitely. And that's, that's the thing. But most people like, bro, I, I know people. I've, everybody would dream to be at your level, but it's like, this is where some people's dreams don't even come to this point. Yeah. Like some people didn't get to the point to even say, I want to own a house more or less more, you know, like they don't, mm. that's, and so that's the part where it's like, okay, like they see you and say, okay, well it is possible. And then they start seeing more. And so it's like, you show them that it's possible and then you keep going. So it's, it's forcing them to see what's a reality, whether or not they, they're going to keep watching. Right. So it's like, okay, well, you may not want this for you, but I want you to know it's possible. Right. Because who knows who does, Man, you know? For real. You're stretching so many other people, even older people, younger, because they didn't know it was a reality. Mm-hmm. Who knew you could be doing this? You know, it's like none of it's so it's like yeah. you going and chasing your dreams is actually inspiring and doing more for other people just by showing them what a reality could be by somebody doing it for you. Yeah. Somebody brought you in and took you under and said, this is what it is. And like, and you're like, okay, bet. But you just have a bigger audience, obviously, right, instead right. of like, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're talking about all the easy stuff. Let's talk about the hard stuff again. Now, in college, I remember vividly, there was a very rough introduction to you and credit. I mean, yeah. I mean, we didn't talk have about it. credit. Not knowing it, not getting it, and then it was like, I actually the craziest part is is when I got my first credit card in college, I understood it. I didn't understand it. I'm like, I understood I had this card. I understood I had to pay it back, but I didn't get anything outside of that. It was right. like, okay, like it's you, buddy, you, it, pay it back. That's it exactly. And it was like, oh wait, and then you find out our oh, minimum payments, and then you fall in, you know. So it's like, like well, I guess you, I don't you, have to pay it all. And back. then you start, yeah. That that was. I think most people's introduction to college is when you're a broke college student trying mm-hmm. to figure it out and they send you those promo flyers like, oh, you got a school account? Well, let's just... Right. And so, I, I, good part is I got credit cards then, 
And the best part is I was never late on a payment. It was just, I didn't know what I didn't know. So it was like, I was, you know, it was like, okay. And, and then it gets really easy to just not, not know. I was, I just fell into the idea of like, okay, I could just live. Like I could just use these cards and not, you know, like let it be. So you had, what did you do? Like how much did you have? How much debt did you have? Where was everything at where you were like, all right. Well, see, I, I, the craziest part is, is I was using s- most of it. Some of I was using some of it for lifestyle. You know, like okay, I'm get I get a little paycheck. I'll put it on the back end, but I need this now. Right. That was a good chunk of it. But some of it I was actually doing the investing with. So I was buying the kicks. Mm-hmm. So I buy the kicks. I get two pair. I'm paying. You know, what I'm saying I might mm-hmm. make a profit, throw the profit on the card. So it's kind of like I was using it as like floating capital. Mm-hmm. But outside of the fact that like I wasn't responsible enough to pay it back down to zero, right. so you know it got it ran up to thousands, and I was okay. I got a couple extra, you know, and it's like, but then something comes up, so you're like, okay, I was supposed to put a thousand on it. I'm gonna put four hundred, and at six, I get back, you know. So yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. you know, and it, that created that like that. That was my first introduction to credit and like how it works. So I had to go through that all the credit, like everything you think about credit, like all that stuff. I was in the midst of learning how to payment. Like, you know, okay, like, yeah, you get the notice, like, oh, your payment is is due it day late. He's like, oh man, my credit's gonna go crazy. And then it doesn't change, but he's like, oh, okay, like you got a little window. So I, I, it was by me bumping my head and just trying out trial and error. Mm-hmm. And then like, okay, like that's how I started figuring it out. When it was like, okay, I'm nine, I was 19, I got my first card, my first own personal card. So I'm like, okay, I don't know anything. So- What's the limit on your first card? Like fifteen hundred. Okay. And then I remember it, my first card was seven hundred dollars. Yeah. I still got that card today. And yeah, I still got mine. And it, it and I was it's like, like fifteen thousand now. I think mine is twelve. Yeah, because I don't crazy. even I don't even use it because the perk so there's, there's no perk. It's your me. old yeah. card. You use yeah. it for your history. But, yeah. But yeah, it's just showing you like ten. What is that? Twelve years ago. Yeah. Eleven like years ago. Yeah. But so like yeah so like even that it was like okay by me bumping my head and running the credit cards up I run them up max them out pay them off finally mm-hmm. and just you know the ebbs and flows of that. I'm like, okay, this is, this ain't it, but this is just it for now. Like, I just, mm-hmm. I just accepted it, and I'm like, I can do this, and I, cause I, I, then I got out of college, and I was making the means to do it. So then, it, you know, that was a different part. But it was like in college, it was really like, I was using a lot of kicks. I did, I got a lot of kicks, and was able to like mm-hmm. fund college, like my expenses in college was a lot of it was shoe money that I was able to to float. So you're making bread, mm-hmm. and you had a bigger priority on buying a car over a house. I would say. Yeah, for sure. So I'll, you're like getting your credit stuff figured out and you're like, I just need to get it right so I can get this car. Well, see, the thing is, is it was like, I would say at the level I was at at that point, a car was the biggest purchased. Mm-hmm. So when you look, you know what I'm saying? Like when I, as far as assets mm-hmm. and, and people call them liabilities because they depreciate and all of that, I know they're going to tear me apart, but it, I'm just saying, like, when people thought of it, like, okay, if I have an asset, they would say their car. Mm-hmm. That's just what they assumed to be. Right, right, And so right. that was my perspective. Like, okay, well, you know, a car. And so that's why when I got my car, well, when I was trying to get a car, it was the pro- number one priority. So, like, okay. you know, it was like that was it because it was like, oh, when when you get that, you're good. You you right. got the... I got the list. So you what got, you buy? I bought a new Camaro, a SS, the, the one from Transformers when they first, like, 2010, when it first dropped. Yeah. So, like, these is like... Everybody got Camaros now. I know people, you At know, the they, time it was the hottest in the streets. And me and Lou was out here. Was, but, yep. but so, but it was, I guess, and then I had an epiphany. So then, um, I had my, I had just moved, got out of college, got my first two bedroom apartment. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing crazy. It was like, when I first moved in, it was like 800 bucks almost. Mm-hmm. So it was like, you, you know, it wasn't nothing. So, yeah. But I had this new Camaro. And so, and mind you, that the craziest part though is because I got my, my, because I bumped my head and all that stuff in college with the credit, by the time I graduated, I had figured it out. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was I was with the credit bid. By, the, by then, I was Yeah, because you had a plan to get the car. Like, I remember you, had, you was like, bro, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Like, I'm going to yeah, go get the car. Listen, like, it's going to work. Don't worry. And that, that was me bumping my head. I literally, I had to figure it out. And so when I graduated, I had just got the new job. And then I was... uh I needed, I wanted the car and I'm like, okay. So I went and did all the process, got pre-approved and everything. Went and got the car. I financed it. Mind you, at the time I was 22, 23, 22. I had a 1% interest rate. I put $0 down. Mm-hmm. And I, the only thing they were getting me on was my insurance because I was only 21, 22. So they was taxing me. But I literally, I went in there. I didn't give them nothing down and I had a 1% interest rate 
which sounds absurd, I know right now, but it's like my car note was literally 1%. Right. My very first car loan, because I had bumped my head and I knew, okay, before you get out of here, you got to get this together, a right. college. So what was it that you had to get together? It was more like my debt to income, like just okay. paying the car. Like, so it was like, okay, because I would, I have the money and I have the credit card and then you spend the car, you're supposed to pay it back. I'm just not doing that on time. Like I'm doing it on time to the, what I wanted to, but I'm not being responsible enough to pay it all or paying it, you know, to where it was like, okay, like, right. I, I, I don't know. I was just a fan of seeing my money more than I was paying them back. Not right. really. Like, you know, you pay interest. Right. And so, but I mean, most of those times it was like interest. I would get all the, the, you know, 15 months, 18 months, zero yeah. percent. So it was really some of that was free money. It's like but, but, yeah. but, but even carrying a balance with free money, free money, quote unquote, it still affects your debt to income right. and it still affects your overhead. Mm -hmm. So like I had, a high overhead, even if all my debt was on 0%, the overhead was still high. You still got to make that monthly. I still got to make the monthly pay. And then you think about, you got three cars that's on 0%. Now you got to make three payments and then you got it. Then it's like, oh, they all got a balance. Yeah. And then you, and then it's like, so it, that's, that's what it, so, so it was that part of it. So that's one thing that uh, is very interesting because people are like, oh, I got to fix the debt to income and all the other stuff. But at the end of the day, you got to pay to play. So whether you're taking the money and paying off the old credit or using it for leverage for a new loan to get the next thing or something, typically you got to always find a way to pay something off to lower this number or do this to do that or use that for the down payment. So, but you also have to get debt to get credit. Right. So that's the caveat. Right. So it's like you, you don't get no credit. You have no credit score. Yeah. So then, and then you have no lending history. Right. And then you have, so it's like, so it's what crazy. I was, it was like, you got to play the game. But you can't let it consume you. Mm -hmm. That was the part of it. It was like, you know, because they're not going to go give you a car or house or anything if you don't have any credit at all. So if you were like, let you, I don't care how much money you make, unless you're paying for the house in cash, if you want a loan, you're going to have to put a substantial amount down before they even, you know, so it's like, because you have nothing established to show that you can make that payment. Mm -hmm. And so for me, they were like, you know, you're making your, I made my payment on time. Like I told you, since, since 19, I, all the payments are on time. Were they in full? No. Right. But, you know, they, they was getting their money. And so it, that was a part of it. it was like, okay, like, and, and payment history is really important. So showing that you could pay on time is one of the biggest factors. So mm -hmm. I was like, because even if you got some debt, if you paying everybody and you're taking care of it and you're, they see the balances coming right. down and you're not just adding more to it, it's like, okay, like, we see them attacking it. Okay, then you get it down to the reasonable numbers and then you pay it, whatever. And so I was like, it was I was doing that, which was also, I guess, building trust for the lenders to show later that I could use the money, mm -hmm. and, you know. So, so uh, for the people that don't know uh, about credit, give them some of the, I guess, few key things to focus on when it comes to that. Because we always, a lot of people say, you got to get your credit right. You need to have credit. But then they're like, what does that mean, right? Like, is it? How much available credit do you have? How long, you know, the history, all the stuff? Like, what would you say or some things that you would give somebody for key indicators to, like, focus on? So credit is a combination. Mm -hmm. So your on-time payments matter. How much available you can spend matters. How much of that you're using that you've already spent out versus what you can. So, like, you know, the balance Like, if you had 10000 exactly. available and you used... 4,000, yep. 40%. That, that, that matters. And then also the kind of debt or, you know, credit, I mean, like what you're using. So for instance, a car loan is different than a house loan, mm -hmm. different than a credit card loan, different than an installment loan. Mm -hmm. And so there's a different variety of loans. Your student loans are different. They hold different weight and they have yeah. different percentages. Exactly. And also they all cost you different kind of amount of money to borrow and use and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so and they have different barriers of entry as well. Exactly. And so typically it's think of it like an escalator. So like if, if a house is your end all be all goal and that's your biggest credit purchase that you're going to need, put it at the top of the escalator and everything else is in between you and that. Mm -hmm. So you want to get your first credit card, you're on the escalator or you're not, I mean, you're going to be a credit card, whatever you want to do to establish it. You want to go get a line of credit at a store, whatever you need to get a credit going for yourself to establish it. Mm -hmm. You do in your name legally, of course, but you know, mm -hmm. you do that. And then everything else in between there is, is going up or towards it. So you get another card or you need another, and it's, it's, it's being responsible, but you also have to use it to show that you're lender worthy, that you can borrow money and pay it back. Mm -hmm. So that may mean, okay, you may want the new lawnmower. And it may be twenty five hundred dollars. You could buy it cash, 
But you, if you have the cash, put it to the side. Go and they, let's say they offer zero percent financing for six months. Finance it. Go put half down and make those payments, just to show them that you can do it. Mm-hmm. And it's not about that you need them in that moment, but you will need the lenders at some moment. For something and, else. Exactly. And so it's hard for them to give you a four or five, six hundred thousand dollar house if you can't, you know, show Do them that you can. with a lawnmower. Exactly. So that, <laughs> that was the thing, like not a lawnmower, but you know, so it's, it's really like the escalator, build no, that yeah. up and then having different kinds. So like if you got a line of credit, you got a credit car, you got a car loan, student loans, the, the variety of it matters too. But I mean, Obviously, you don't want to be in debt, but you, so you know, use it responsibly. But knowing that you have to establish it and at least have it to create your credit scores, what, mm-hmm. what matters. And then, um, I mean, we could run a whole credit tutorial class if we needed to, but <laughs> we should, we should do one. Listen, I'm like, no expert. I just pretend to be. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the best at it yeah. i can't say i'm the best it's not my profession yeah. i know a couple of things you know what i'm saying i got a couple of things i think but, if we if we frame it like this is what worked for us yeah, yeah you know like sure. like well, not- i mean okay so like prime example like i've never had a secured credit card before but i know a lot of people that that's what that was their first way of getting into it mm-hmm. like that was their only option they was like you got to do this to get started and then they barely had any money it was like just use what you got to get the security yeah. card you got to get started somewhere like it's the first step on the escalator mm-hmm. or the other part when you become an authorized user yeah now that part right there is key because when it help your debt to income and other things or your history and having the time on there yeah. is huge. Like if you could find somebody that has like a card that they don't use and they're like never going to use it and the balance is like zero or a hundred bucks or whatever. And it's like 10 or 15,000 or $20,000 and it's been active for 10 years. Like those are great scenarios to help you when you're trying to get that loan for something or whatever it may be or help your credit history. So Again, a whole nother option, I think, yeah. is great because I've done that before. For sure. And I think what it is, is it's like, it's like a good tool. Just use it wisely. You know, some people yeah. do it. Because like yeah. the, the people, some people don't know, though, if let's say you get added on that card and somebody goes and, and spends all and of it. And then the person yeah, they, goes they max the it. They go Like the person goes and maxes the card out. Right. That's on your credit. Exactly. So now you, so it's, 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 you have to have an understanding of what it is. And most times it's parents that do it. Because it, obviously it helps their child, but it's like, it, it's just, you know, that that's the most common situation outside of the other ways where you know people who can help you out. But that's, that's what I'm saying. Like some people that I was talking to people and they, they had no idea. They're like, yeah, I'll just get on those authorized user. And I'm like, what's the balance? Right. They're like, what's, it's at 50%. And I'm like, well, that goes to you. Right, right, and right, that's, right. you know, and it's like, do you want to be, and it's like, they're like, oh, I didn't know. I thought I'd just get the, and I'm like, yeah, no, nah. you, you get the rest. You but get all of it. You got, it's, it's a your, double-edged sword. I mean, it's sure. not yours. You're shown as, it's on your report though. Yeah. It all shows. And that's what I, that's the part I'd be telling like, don't just take it because somebody could give, you know. For sure. If they're just giving it to you and they, you don't even know them like that, you should be worried. Oh, yeah, you're like, yeah, nah. <laughs> but no. Nah. I think, yeah. I mean, scenarios too, like finding a co-signer on a home loan and stuff. <laughs> it's like building relationships, finding the right people. And I think that's what's so dope about seeing like the same thing. Families helping other members in the family, friends helping other members in their core group. Because when you get around those type of people, it becomes an option. It becomes a thing that you can talk about that people aren't going to push you away from or don't know about the topic or whatever, because they're going to be the ones that's going to help you get farther in life or get that next thing that you need. And it's literally almost like a cosign in both scenarios uh, for getting those type of things. So Talk to your parents, talk to your friends, talk to your families, because if you can prove to your parents at a young age, like, hey, I'm responsible with my stuff. I need you to help me co-sign on this, whatever. Or, uh, you know, as me as an authorized user, like neither one of us are going to be using the card anyways. Like this is going to help me in the long run. You could take me off after X amount of time. Like all those different scenarios are going to be key to helping you propel a lot faster. And a lot of stuff that people don't really talk about. It's so crazy because like people don't talk about it. And people don't know about it and all that stuff because it, and sometimes it even has like a negative connotation just because like oh if I don't know about it then it ain't you know, right. but in reality it's like 
Sorry to interrupt the podcast, but I had a quick question. Are you guys interested in taking your shoe game to another level, but you just don't know where to start? I built a full program just for somebody like you, the Six Figure Sneakerhead. It's an eight week program that takes you through all the steps that you need to know. We have a full community where you can engage with everybody else that's going through the same program as you, we have monthly live meetups where you can connect with me and other members on the inside, and we set goals for each other and hold each other accountable. Also, we give away a free pair of shoes every single month with different challenges. If this is something that's for you or you're looking to take your game to the next level or even flip your sneakers to turn that into real estate, this is the place where you need to be. I can help you with finding loans and remodeling properties and getting yourself on the right path to become a millionaire if that's something that you desire. If this sounds like something for you, hit the link down below in the description and get signed up today. This is more than just sneakers. I wanna see people grow and succeed in all aspects of life. Let's get back to the podcast. And some people don't even have the support system them to do it exactly. and so it's like you have to intentionally surround yourself with people who are doing are in the area of what you like to do and whether that's even your friends mm -hmm. so it's like you know you so it's like if no one's talking about it and no one's interested in it then you got to move not move literally but like you got to move out that circle not saying those are people but you're not going to get what you need out of that circle right and so because we're we always have feed off of each other like we learn something we're sharing it Cause it's like, it does me no good to just know it. It's like, okay, if I can't even use it now, oh, I know you can, so let me, but most people harbor it or they want to keep it or they want to charge you for it. But it's yeah. like, in reality, it's like, nah, it's like, I'll use it when I need it, but why not? All, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it's a different mindset, but that goes to our group mindset opposed to, you know, so you got to be intentional about even your family. Yeah. A lot of your family ain't going to do none of this for you. They don't, if they, no one did it, they're going to say, no one did it for me and I figured it out or no one, and I didn't, so right. don't be a, don't, when you get all of that, that's normal. That's, that's, not everybody's going to do that, but people will. And so it's like, it's really finding the people who kind of connect with what you, what you're going towards and can see, like, you, they might not see the vision yet because you might not see it, but it's like, okay, this is what I wanted. You know, it's like, if they, if they you know, that's what you have to find is a common community of people Related or not. And also, it's really like right now, you can't afford not to talk about it. It's more expensive than it's ever been to live. You can't, what? You can't cough and not cough. It's like you leave a house is $100. And, and like, and that's what I'm saying. So it's like, because everything costs so much, and even if you don't have the means yet, it's uncomfortable to talk about, you still got to talk about this stuff. Like, no matter, because it's like, you got to figure out, because when you look around, you like, bro, how are people survive? How are we getting through this? Right. When you start looking at like, okay, and so it's like, but the only way you figure that out is by you got to get into the, the rooms where more people have more than you. Yes. So then you say, okay, well, if, if I'm here, what, what, and I want more, I don't know what more is, but I want more. You got to go find what that is because nine times out of 10, especially right now, no one's just giving that, you know, most people aren't just giving you this open book to them. Right. It's more like, no, you have to be intentional and figure out what that it looks like for you and then go figure out how to get yourself around that and serve. Like a lot of the stuff that we did at those levels to get in those rooms, we served in some way. We we were, we didn't come with an ask for a handout. We didn't come expecting anything. Ooh, none, of none of that. Like we usually are the ones doing the busy work or whatever it needs because we understand it's an opportunity. And most times it's not even money. We don't, most of us, we don't like all those people I help get the houses. I don't get paid for that. Right. I'm just talking to them about buying houses. I'm just telling you what you didn't know. And you literally going to buy a house the next day. Right. Like, and that's, that's the difference. So it's like, but that's, that's what we don't have. And it's like, because we're not having those conversations and they're siloed and people, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody want to keep it to themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, nah, if we didn't talk money, then we would have no understanding of what's out there. Right. We would just think our money is the cap or whatever. You know, you know, it's more obviously, but it's like, you don't, you know, you just don't know. And I'm like, nah, bro, I'm talking money all the time. Like we talk real numbers and it's like, I'm not even nosy. I just need to know more information to make me a better person as a whole. Right. Like I need to know what it costs. What the, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you live in a million dollar house? Mm -hmm. What's your mortgage? People might think that's crazy me to ask. I'm asking. Uh, like, man, I'm asking. I want to know I'm utility. How much, bro, how much you pay on utility? Like, you know, like all that. But, but the thing is, what I realized is when people have these assets and this, these investments, they, and I approach them and we're talking and whenever we have the, and it comes up, they, nine times out of 10, they share with me, not because they feel like I'm being nosy or I'm going to run off with information. They can see the genuine curiosity that I have right. because I'm, they see me forging a plan somewhere in my head. 
I'm like, oh wait, okay, so this is all possible. Right. And then you like, and then most time, this is another part. Most of those people, only thing they ever get asked is for money. Mm-hmm. And so when you find those people who have a lot and you don't ask for money, you become an anomaly. Right. They remember you because you didn't ask. Yep. And then they'll reach out to you and hit you up. And what? Like, hey, I got this thing. I want to help you out. Like uh, and, whatever you're in. And then they'll give you money. They'll hit you and be like, I know you're gonna make it. You, I want to give you money. Like, tell me what I can invest in. Tell me what I can do. But that's a different, like, like we search for the relationships first because the money, we, we know money comes and goes and there's more of it that's going to come, you know? So it's like, it's like, yes, I want a dollar, but I would much rather a relationship that teaches me something that helped like most. And then the most times when I was, when I was first doing this, it was like, I want the bread. I'm not, I'm, I'm just, we have the shoe game. This is all I need to, you know, like, okay, bet. Help me flip. And it's like, I had to take a step back and say, nah. The money's only temporarily because if it doesn't go to plan, you're never going to want to see them again until you pay. You know what I'm saying? So right. then, then you just like, oh, my relationship bro, is only worth this much. Bro, you could borrow your way out of a good relationship yeah. and now you have no access. I know. A lot of $200 relationships. Bro, that's, <laughs> listen, bro. and But that's what I'm saying. Like, $50 relationship. But, but a lot of it comes down to like, you don't want to go back because you don't have it. Whatever it may be, right? Yeah. But think about how much more you could have got from that person had you didn't put the money in there. That's what it, that's how we see it. It's like, and that's, that's like, that's a hack. Mm-hmm. It's like, I mean, of course we want money. Money is, you know, we need that, but it's like, that's not the end goal be all. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And a lot of the times if I am helping people and I'm not getting any money, I don't expect any money. Mm-hmm. So that way there is no, you don't got to let down. You're not doing it for the money. And right. like, there is no monetary dollar number. I'm like, bet I'm doing this. It should be this that come with it. Yeah. It's like, okay, if, if something comes, it's a blessing. If it right. don't, I didn't need it. Like, I'm not, I didn't need it, but it just wasn't supposed to. And so, like, that's, and that's because I'm okay with, narr- n- like, niching down. Mm-hmm. Like, when, when you want everything, you're like, nah, that was my money. I was supposed to get, like, but when you're like, nah, I'm okay, just my lane. This was a story I told, I'll give a synopsis of the shorter story of what I told you last time when I bought the house. So, it, uh, it was, what year was that? 16. I think so, yeah, because I graduated in 14 and I was in that place for two years. And so what happened was, is uh, we were looking, like, you know, learning about the loan. So I was seeing houses go for sale, people flipping houses. And I'm like, okay, I would love to buy a house. And then I also thought back to my eighth grade self, like, okay, like, I remember when they bought our family home and kicked us out, you know, how do, how do I get my own house? And so that's when I found out about the credit union here and then found out that they had the zero down home loan. And then that, once I found about that, it was, it was a wrap. The, the big banks are the ones that you typically see in every state you go to. The Chase is Bank of America's, Wells Fargo's. Those are big banks. They do big business. They, everybody can get an account with them, but they don't, you're just a number if you have an account with them. Like, you know, you can have a brand, you can have a business manager, asset manager, whatever, but you're just a number. And the credit union, I'm not saying you're not just a number. You do have a member number, but it's niched down for your market. So like the credit unions are typically the people based in like, you know, the community back and they have all, you know, it's like, it, it's more of a, a local, smaller level. Still give out loans and mortgages and okay. car loans. Like in my experience, they don't have the technology. Right. So I that, was like, yeah, so yeah. Head. So like the apps is always trash. Yeah. All, I'm not always, but for the most part trash. And it's like, but because they don't have the big backing, like the big banks. So the big banks can have the best the best apps, always renew them, refresh them. But the credit unions are working with a smaller budget. But I mean, so that's the difference. That, but outside of that, I like them a lot, you know, especially because you're, they understand, like, like if you're buying something or you're looking to buy a house or whatever, they understand the area. You know what I'm saying? Not all big banks are going to understand even, you know, like the, right. the, the sub markets. No matter what. Nine times out of 10, if they're in another place, their mark is completely different than yours. Right. And so then people tend to put their take on it. So it's like, oh, yeah, like this. And so, but it's like, nah, this is completely different. So when you find somebody local that has, you know, like that can know the market, understand the different areas, neighborhoods, that makes a big difference. Mm-hmm. Not saying the loan officers at the big banks don't know that. Yeah. I'm just saying that's what the credit union is based around is the community. Is That's like their missions. So the lender... He was actually the one doing the home buying class. So yeah, we we went to the class. He told us about the loans. So the credit union sent out an email, like, you know, home buying seminar, you know, one of those classes. 
And it's like, oh, you just come find out about our loans that we offer. And so they bring a realtor in, they bring a lender in, they kind of give you the spiel. It's really a salesman package, right, 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 right. but I was buying. So I was I like, like, I need, like, I, I, like, I was like, hold up. You said how much? And so, but yeah, there was probably 10 of us, 12 of us. It was like downstairs in the, like the basement of a building. Right, right, right. Like it wasn't nothing crazy. It was like, yeah. and it was nothing, it wasn't even tech savvy. They had it in some packets of paper. Yeah. That's all, that's the only thing they brought was a packet. It wasn't, you just walk in here blindly. Bro, like, didn't, didn't know what th- is this? I'm about to, bro, I had no this. idea. I didn't know none of the Linda. I didn't know nobody in there. I saw the AJ. Like we went in together, but everybody else, I didn't know what we was going into. Okay. And so when we got there, they just talked about all the loans, and then they got to the very last one, and they were like the the zero down loan. And I'm like zero down. <laughs> like- and then so then when they gave us the details and like yeah, you could do zero down. You have no PMI. And Tell them what a PMI is. It's a principal mortgage insurance. Okay. And so that's the insurance that the bank charges you every month when you pay your payment. Money goes straight to them as like an insurance. So if you didn't pay, even though they would take your house anywhere if you didn't pay. But the only way you can't get rid of it is if it's an FHA loan and then you have to refinance out of yeah, it. Yeah. But any other conventional loan and all that stuff, you can get rid of it if you got enough equity. Or, you know, you, especially with the loan length. But yeah, so when I found out about the zero down, the P, there was no PMI. The only caveat was the interest rate was higher. Yeah. So that's the, they're like, okay, and you have no down payment. And so then they're like, all you would have to pay is closing cost. Mm-hmm. That's it? Okay. So then when we when I went out, we were looking at properties mm-hmm. and I just kept seeing house. And, and for this is another part that people make a mistake. In your first house, it's not your dream house. Right. And everybody, you know, so especially when I got pre-approved, I told people and everybody sent me houses that was at my max budget. That was like, you know, it was, a, it was everything that they thought. I'm like- nice. C- couldn't be that. Stuff. I was 24. Right. I'd had no business being in the biggest house on anybody block because right. you need to, I needed to get in. I need to understand what it costs to maintain a house, the expenses, how tax, the property taxes work, how all of the stuff that go insurance. So when I, if you, you when you go from renting to home ownership, it's a big shift. Yeah. You responsible for everything and all that. So I was like, I didn't want to get in one. I didn't want to get in because I knew I wasn't going to get my dream house for the budget they gave me anyway. I'm like, you're like, yeah, yeah, you got, you know, let's say it was 350. Okay. And this was in 2014. Okay. It wasn't, you could get a single family home, but you wasn't going to get a mansion. That's this is, crazy. this is, this is 350 in comparison to like, you know, 350 can get you like a 2000 square foot home at the time. Now 350 gets you like a fixer here. And, and so, but like, so that, that just shows. So I was like, okay, you know, I know what I could spend. So I was out looking at places, even though people sending me all these expensive ones, I'm like, nah. So I ended up buying a house that was like a hundred thousand less. Finding when I was a hundred thousand less than what I was pre-approved for. I'm like, well, bet I know I can afford this. Right. And then I'm like, I don't want to hide, you know, like, and then my rent was going up. That was the real reason too. Another reason was like my rent was finna go up. And then when I got my first mortgage, my rent was cheaper than that mortgage. I mean, my mortgage was cheaper than that rent was going to go up to. So that it all worked out at that same time. And so like when, and I was went to the three bedroom house. And so it was like, it was like in that process, it was like, okay, my cost of living didn't go up. This was mind you, this is in everybody's situation. Right. This was just mine. So my cost of living didn't go up as far as monthly there. But I had maintenance. You know, outside of light bulbs, you know, you're like, okay, bet. Hole in a wall. Can't call my landlord. I gotta patch that. You like, okay, you know, it's like so, so and so then it was me. I spent four years there and I loved it. And this another part what people don't talk about. At the beginning, when I bought that house, I was fresh out of college. By two, I had been in an apartment for two years, but I was just out of college then. And my college roommate was still in school. So I rented him a room at my house. Because you guys were roommates at the it, apartment. We were roommates in college. We graduated college, moved into an apartment together. Then we then I moved him into my house. So we lived together for like three, four years. Because what happens is, is okay, he was offsetting the rent cost when we lived in this apartment. Why not offset my mortgage? Right. And so then my mortgage was like, you know, have. And then for me, it was like, we got more space here. We got more, you know, it was, every, it was three times the size of our apartment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and it was like the, the rent didn't go up crazy more than what you, you know, so it's like, okay, cool. So it, it worked. And then when uh, we went separate ways, when I was, I was getting rid of the house. And so then I sold that house. Mm-hmm. But when I, in that whole process, let me go back really quick. Before I, when I was buying that house, I had. Got the house. It was two thirty, right? Mm-hmm. I put nothing down, uh, and then I had the seller give me closing cost. Mm-hmm. So they gave me the closing cost, and then the closing cost covered everything. And then I had extra money, and I bought the PMI down. Mm-hmm. 
So that's like the short version. So I ended up getting the house and I paid like $340 because I didn't have any closing costs. I didn't have anything. That was just the inspection. And so because I didn't buy the top end of the market, I was able to upgrade my house before I left. So I, I was like, I lived in it. It was, it was build a grade entry level. I upgraded it, painted the, you know, you could paint some cabinets and they look brand new. And it's right, like, right, right, so you could, right. I was just did some cosmetic fixes yeah. and I was able to, you know, so then when I sold, this is another part they don't tell you. If you live in it, you get the capital gains right off. So then, you, I mean, you don't have to pay the taxes on the first 250000 of profit. So even though I made six figures, you get to keep that and go roll and you could do whatever you want with it. But then I went and bought another family home because I needed another house to live in. But like, say you wanted to go move out the country, do whatever you wanted to. You could have the leisure. You can go become a renter again and go live wherever you wanted to. You would, but that that was my thought process. Like, okay, I I need somewhere to live. So you got two years. You have to live in it two of the last five years. Right. And if you're single, mm-hmm. and so and it's all based off of how much you net. So your profits. Mm-hmm. So let's I, we we use examples. You have a house. You owe a hundred thousand. You sell it for two fifty. Mm-hmm. You get a hundred and fifty thousand dollars that you walk away with. Mm-hmm. You pay zero dollars in taxes on that because you didn't make over two hundred and fifty thousand as a single person. If you're married, it's a half a million dollars. And so now, let's say you have a house, you sell for a, you know hundred thousand dollar loan on it. You sell it for five hundred thousand. You get a check for four hundred thousand dollars. You don't pay any taxes on it because you're a married couple and you lived in it for two of the last five years. So even if you lived in it two years and then you rented it out two years and then sold it, as long as you lived in it two of the last five. And then anything you make profit after that, you pay taxes on just the profits after that part. But yeah, and that, and it's it's your primary residence as long as you lived in it. That's the rule. And then you can do it again. So you move out and you go live in another place for five years. You sell it. And so that's how, and that's what the secret that a lot of the elders don't tell you is they just rolled equity. Most of them bought a house for 50,000, sold it for 250, bought another one for 300 and sold it for five. And they just can't. And so it's like you see them now and they're, you know, older, established in these mansions. And they're in this it's big crib. House. It's be- And a lot of them rolled it over or they stuck it out. And it was just they got, in a, you know, got a really good deal on it and just built it up from there. And, you know, back in the day. Mm-hmm. So it's either like they either got a good deal and they just built it out to what they dreamed it would be. Mm-hmm. Or they worked their way up, rolled over equity and then got to the point to where now because it sounds crazy. But I know people who roll over a million dollars in equity. And it's like, you know, why would you not, you know, it's like, well, one, you don't want to pay the taxes on it. So you go buy more property and 1031 it, but they're just rolling their equity over and that just keeps buying them more of a house. You done done all this. You got the crib, you done flipped it, you done made some money, you done bought another crib, trying to figure it out. What is the, you know, you got some skin in the game now. You understand a couple of things, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) So what's the mindset now? Is it like, I need I need ten mil. I need a hundred mil. I'm, I'm buying houses all over the country. I need apartment complex. Like I need storage units. You know, everybody goes in so many different ways. Like, what, what's the play? Uh, I think what I realized is is like I told you earlier. Like, all of that sounds amazing in theory, mm-hmm. and then I, of course, I said I wanted some of that stuff at times, but I had to pare down and focus here, and I think that'll be the byproduct. So yeah, I would love to. You know get the mansion and do all of that stuff. That's mm-hmm. the goal. But that's the big goal that I'm filling in now. So I mm-hmm. think it's, it's more like I'm not capping it at anything. All that is possible. Any mm-hmm. of that stuff you listed is all up for grabs. Mm-hmm. And I think right now it's more like if I can take care of this season with this house and do what I'm supposed to do here, mm-hmm. it'll unlock that next level, which would then put me there. But okay. it, So for now it's really like, Okay, let me, and then because I got the flip, it just giving me more, like, you know, selling the house and making money. Now it helps me more. Well, what would I do in my daily interaction? Like, you know, when I talk to people and I'm helping them get their houses. Mm-hmm. So like I told you how I'm helping them buy them houses. It's like, I'm giving you real life experience. Mm-hmm. I'm not, we're not going off a of theory. We're not going off of what could have been. We're not going off of any of that. This mm-hmm. is like, I lived this out. Like I did this. I didn't do it all. I did all of this stuff I'm telling you about. And so I'm like, okay, well, this isn't your story, but this is how you can see, you know, right. okay. And then how do we pick yours apart to figure out how we play it? And so it's like, it's being able to, I think where I'm at right now, it's like, who knows? I, f- I can own it all. You know what I'm saying? Go get my island like I want to, do all of that, right? But in the meantime, it's like, I got to keep scaling at this level. So like, okay, cool. Stay, learn more. I just, I think for me, it's learn more and give more back. And then it gets me in like, and then getting those rooms where mm-hmm. other people are. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, bet, because it's like, I'm helping those people get their houses and all of that. Tell right. them, you know, like, we'll talk about that in a second, but like, I'm helping them there. 
But then that helps me because you don't know who those people are. Yeah. You and just, you, they could, you, you can help I mean, them get their first house. The next thing you know, they got 10 properties later and they're like, yo, you helped me through this. And now I need to help you with this or let's invest on something together or whatever. It may you, be. And it, yeah. And it, you never know. And it's, it's sometimes it's that. And sometimes it's like, I just had no direction for life. And mm-hmm. that just gave, you know what I'm saying? Like you, not me, just the information right. and them doing the work led them to a whole different outcome in life. And you're like, dang, bro, it was just some, I just told you some words because I'm not going to fill nobody application out. I'm not doing, I'm not, that, that ain't where it is going. I'm not one right, of them right, people. Right. I'm more like, let's sit down and talk about where you're at and how, what you want to do. And I can tell you how it's possible because mm-hmm. it ain't you. You're not too far gone. Ain't nobody too far. It's like, it's yeah. always a get back. Is it harder than others? Of course, but there's all, so it's like, that's what I talk. And it's like, because most people, when I talk with them, they haven't talked to anybody outside of their family or, you know, like in this situation, that doesn't want anything from them. Right. Like these people, I don't get anything from them. Like I'm not asking for a dollar. I'm not right. like, like if you feel so inclined, would give me a give. What I don't care about none of that though. In reality, it's like I'm helping them because I got some information and I was afford like like that scholarship. Yeah, they gave me a hundred thousand dollars scholarship to go to college. It's the least I can do is share what I've been through. Right. And then after that, you know what I'm saying? I literally, I had a, I had a, a good friend of mine. He, him. His wife and kids, they were in a smaller place. Mm-hmm. You know, they outgrew it. They had another kid. It just wasn't, it just wasn't it. And we were just talking and I'm like, you know, like I'll come over and I'll talk with y'all and we have a conversation. Literally, I'm like, I'm breaking it down. I'm like, this is how you can get the house. This is how much it's going to cost. They had already been talking to some loan offers. They had been, they knew a little bit, right, but they, right, right. they just didn't know it was for them. You see the whole play. Yeah. So yeah. when we sat down and just talked about like how realistic it was and mm-hmm. what this does and all of that, they got pre-approved that next, like they got their full real pre-approval. They put an offer in that next week and bought the, bought that same house, moved their whole family into it. Right. And now that's a whole, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a whole different trajectory than what if I just never showed up? Right. So that's just, that's like, that's what, so it's like, and then that's how I collect. So it's like for me, and like that's what's in the 22 million, that's the people that I've helped. Mm-hmm. So it's just nights and weekends. Like I get off of work and somebody be like, yeah, bro, like I, I want to, you know, get in the house. And I'm like, and I'm not even giving them any secret sauce. Like everything I'm telling them, like you didn't make this stuff up. None of this this is, is, bro. None of this is proprietary. None of this is like I didn't. None of this. All it is was like, oh, I went and found a house. I like bought a house, Mm -hmm. sold a house, helped some other people buy houses, figure out their circumstances, Mm -hmm. and then I just got a whole collection of different people who needed help. So now I can help relate to you because I helped somebody else or me. And that's the best part, like. Not only the best part about being like a teacher or educator in a space is like you learn more your knowledge gets deeper because as you're teaching stuff sometimes you know it but then when you explain it to somebody or you explain it for them in their way it clicks even harder for you and then you're like bro i'm like really (laughs) cold at this now like i get it like you know what i'm saying because it's it's easy to explain something one way but now explain it three different ways to three different people that learn different ways yeah now it's like oh man i gotta teach this so like when you get to interact with all these different people and stuff, that helps you become more averse and be able to fit in those rooms and do those things. And it all comes back full circle again. Yeah. And then what it really happens is, is you start talking to more people and it gives you different thinking, thinking like different thought processes. Mm -hmm. So you're like, okay, you come from those circumstances. It's not like you're categorizing them or any, like anything like that. Right. You're just taking their circumstances and saying, I know somebody with those circumstances right. and I know how they won. Yeah. So this is what you need. So it's able to take not I'm not I'm not tweaking that. I'm just I'm just giving like think about it like this way. We've been afforded to be in so many rooms and see so much stuff that nobody will ever see. Right. It's us giving little bits of that back to the people who are, who may never even care to go to that room. Mm-hmm. So like, okay, bet I learned one piece of information that applies to you in this instance, in this moment, and it's gonna change everything. Right give it to you i'm not even no like you know most people put the paywall there they put a barrier they want something for it mm-hmm. no i don't i don't even i don't live cold part is i don't even get like a, a thank you card from the new house on christmas i'm just thinking about <laughs> i don't want it i hope your there. dms aren't flooded after this video because maybe we shouldn't tag not flood. <laughs> we'll tag his dm we'll tag his instagram down below but yeah no it's crazy though because it's it really be like that and i know that you can help a lot of people. And I'll be saying the same thing. I'm like, bro, let's put a whole thing together. Like, let's put a program together and do it. And you'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, come on, let's do it. You'd be well, like, see, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> and I, I guess another part, though, that I didn't talk about it is that if 
if every see the thing is about real estate, not everybody's meant to buy, as you know. Yeah. And it's not for everybody. So don't think I'm telling you to buy a house just because we bought houses and buy whatever. That's and if it ain't for you, it's not for you. But go find out if it's for you first before you make that decision. Yeah. But I would say of of that 22 million, if the other people who were qualified and could buy a house and, you know, financially and everything was like they were all the way together. Now, mentally and, and all that, you know you. So if you're not prepared, you're not. But but on the scratch, on the surface test, like having everything in order, if everybody who did it, it would be like 40 million right now in real estate. And so, and but what it really boils down to is, and people, and I, and I get, you know, people charge for the, their expertise and all that stuff. But a lot of times the free information isn't as valued. So it's like I didn't, we I didn't have breakdown. I didn't tell people everything they need to do, and it just wasn't enough. Even though it was for them, it was enough. But because there was no like because they didn't pay some exorbitant amount of money to get this information, right. if uh, or or like don't get me wrong, the people who who got it for free and ran with it, thank me, for, love me forever. But oh, it was yeah. like, but the other ones like they don't like, and some people is just there. It they, because our culture is capitalistic. Capitalistic. That's just the way it works. You buy and sell the goods. So like be, it's more valuable if I pay for this thing. One hundred percent. I pay for a lot of it. <laughs> and like you've done that too. And mm-hmm. I'm like, because there's been plenty of times where I'm like, bro, just buy the ticket. Go, go. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Like one conversation can make way more return. Yeah, and it sometimes the free information only gets you so far, and then you have to pay to get to the next level. Yeah. But people don't even take the free information as far as it can go. Right. Like I, you know, what I'm saying that's the part of it. It's like. I had to pay or do a lot of research to figure all this out. And so I was like, okay, if I wasn't paying, I was researching. If I wasn't, and I was putting it to test and I was trying, trial and error, mess, not getting, you know what I'm saying? Like bumping my head. But it was like, okay, if I'm not actively trying something, I'm using my money to get in an area to then be exposed to something else to then try, you know? So it's like, it's one of the two. It's either your efforts or your money. At the end of the day, you definitely got to invest into yourself and understand that. You can't just get everything for free, but you got to max out the knowledge, like you were saying, of going and taking advantage of all those free resources, putting it to this peak potential that you know of, you know, because like you only know what you know, right? So you try to learn as much as you can. Um, so where uh, where are you at currently in a mental state of like where you stand, where you want to be, and uh, your just overall like I said, mental side of it. Like, are you happy with things? Are you able to manage the stress and deal with those things, the day-to-day life? Like, how do you organize your schedule? Because I know you put more and more on your plate, it becomes stressful. And like on here, I always talk about this with everybody. Like, how do you manage your stresses and those different things? Because a lot of people don't know how to navigate that. They just want to, oh, the success, all the other things. But it's like, bro, what are you doing day-to-day to stay sane and make this stuff happen? That's a great question. I don't think you do. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, honestly, it's so much pressure that we're under. We put ourselves under a lot of it, and then a lot of it is just the weight of the level in which we wish to be on. Mm-hmm. And so I say I embrace it. Okay. I... I'm, I look at life like I'm in the business of a, uh, it's kind of like you, you can't be a problem solver, but complain about the problems when they come to you. Okay. Like you're like friends, like us, like we're just, we're, our gift is a knack for fixing problems and solving problems. Mm-hmm. And, but it, sometimes it gets overwhelming if you can't step back and look at it for what it is, your gift. Mm-hmm. So that's what I had to do. It's like, I don't let the the things engulf me. Like I could, I have and done it, but mm-hmm. it's like, I don't because it doesn't define me. Okay. So, so you said you have, you've done it. Yeah. So when you did, what was going on? And then how did you like get out of that phase to be in the point now where you're like, I don't let it, I don't let it phase me. I would say, I mean, plenty of times. And it, we're human, so it happens. I would say, like, even for instance, like, car accident. Like, mm-hmm. when I hit the wall going 70. Mm-hmm. Like, after that, like, one, it was my dream, one of my favorite cars. My f- car that I crashed that I loved is my favorite car. But it was more about just everything that comes after that. So then it was like, but I think for me, what it is, is like realizing that 
it happens, those times come, mm-hmm. but you can't stay in it. Mm-hmm. And so that was my thing. Like, I'm not saying I don't, not human, I don't feel this stuff and life don't life, but I'm just saying like, I don't sit in it. Mm-hmm. And that's the biggest part. It's like, and also I don't, I typically don't tell a lot of people mm-hmm. because then I, I don't need the continued reminder of the pity. Like that, right, does, right, that right, like right. most okay. times that doesn't help that me personally, not saying it for everybody, but like, I'm not a like, take my problems to social media or take it to other people, like vent to, bro, I gotta do this, da, da, da. I mean, don't get me wrong, people make content behind it and do yeah. well, and it's for them, that's how they express themselves and all of that, mm-hmm. that ain't me. Mm-hmm. Because it's just like, then it's a constant reminder of whatever. Mm-hmm. Not You already gotta deal with whatever your issues at hand already, mm-hmm. and so if it's not, don't get me wrong, there's accountability, there's all the stuff that go with it on the other way. I mean, you're a husband and a dad yeah. as well. I don't know all of that. And you're yeah. trying to do all the stuff. Yeah. Right. So like that part too. Yeah. It's it's and also it's being a husband and a dad when you didn't know what that looked like. Mm-hmm. So like you have that. So yours will look different right. than me growing up in a house without my dad for most of my life. So it's mm-hmm. like, but that's the difference. So it's like in that, I know I'm not gonna get it all the way right all the time. And I don't even pretend like I do. Mm-hmm. but I don't sit in it. I'm like, okay, how do I get better? Like all of this is about progression. Mm-hmm. Every area of my life is about how I'm going to get better, knowing that where I'm at today isn't going to sustain me for where I want to take it. Right. Like, you know, we're playing for so big and all of Every area of life is just so grand, mm-hmm. have all these great ideas and wishes and hopes, but all the stuff we're doing today, even if we only did what we do today, it wouldn't even sustain us for long. Mm-hmm. Just because of how we operate. Right. And so it's like, that's why I realized like you're doing a lot, you're doing all this stuff. Like, I don't, I don't knock any of it. I, I do a lot. I do all that stuff. But it's like, it's only the beginning. Like, it's mm-hmm. not even the beginning. It's like the you're at the you're you're an adult. These are your responsibilities. Those are the things, you know, like this is what right. you, you signed up for when you, you know. But right. on the flip side of it, it's like, how do you balance that? And that's where it's like, okay, like figuring out, like, okay. Just keep like you getting better is you getting better across the board. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I realized. Like you don't 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 I don't wear it because I'm like I know I just need to get better everywhere. It's right. no it's no area where I'm just yeah. a master at this. It's like nah, even if I'm good at it, I got to get better, which means I'm done. You know what I'm saying? I got. What, what do you think you're focusing on most right now and getting better though? Because I feel like for me, I would say I'm really taking joy in like cutting stuff off. Like, I'm like, I've been editing, whatever. Like, I'm done right now. I'm not going to keep grinding it through and working through it. Like, I know I put myself in a position where I can cut this off and be like, I'll get back to it tomorrow. Instead of, like, really stressing myself about it and putting a high priority on things and stuff, I get some things need to get done. Some things I'm like, does it really need to get done or whatever? Again, who can pay for it? Who could I pay to do it? But... That's my biggest thing is, like, I need to create more free time for myself. Mm -hmm. Time to be just, like, watching a show with my wife or doing whatever. And it sucks because, like, sometimes I'm like, I want to watch a show, but I always want to watch something that's going, like, further my knowledge or something. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You watching that's my type of thing. Like, I'm watching the Heart to Heart podcast or show or whatever, and I'm like, I still haven't seen the Jay-Z episode yet. Like, we need to watch that. Like, I want to see the J. Cole episode. Like, Tyler Perry, da 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 Like, because I know that these dudes are people that I can look to to get knowledge from and learn things and still enjoy it as my my outlet or whatever. Yeah. So, that's kind of like how I am right now. I would say the focus is really... I, I, I like the cutoff thing, but I think for me, I think I need to do more cutting off stuff. But I think it's really like realizing that nothing moves without me. You know what I'm saying? As far as like that I control. Yeah. So it's like like even And I don't like that. Yeah, and I think see, the part about that is it's like, do we even have a choice? We do. I, I and, and I think we figure out what we want to prioritize of success mm-hmm. like what how do we prioritize success is it the number is it the x amount of houses is it the net worth whatever or is it automating systems and creating ways for us to not have to be involved for things to still move and i think that's for me like i feel like higher on my totem pole than anything because i'm like okay how can i set this up for it to be like i don't just like i'll create an evergreen youtube video that i know is going to be successful 
five years from now whether i'm here or not right like so it's like trying to create more and more things like that and i don't know that's what that's what i see it as at least yeah and I, and i could agree and i think for me it's like because we're ever evolving and getting better and want more you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. lessons and all the stuff that come with it i'm looking at it as like i would say getting like my focus is like getting to the point of i would say discipline mm-hmm. across the board that i know i can be so where where do you lack discipline i would say i it's not even that i lack discipline it's i lack the ability at a time to turn away opportunities so it becomes a le- balancing act of it right so, you know, okay. so it's like, so you're it's like, like you taking know, on too much stuff and, that's like really do i need to take this on right exactly now? Like, how valuable is it to the, my like, the, future growth so for instance it's like you you take on some exercise you know you your nights and weekends you're doing whatever you got to do to make some extra money whatever mm-hmm. it's like okay yeah like i want to go sell some more shoes so i got to go do this extra stuff and all right. of that that's a part of it right but then you're like now you're out all night so now you're eating fast food mm-hmm. but you still work out so it's like okay you're not but it's not like right. you're not it's so it's like for me it's like taking on more mm-hmm. than less than the other discipline in other areas mm-hmm. although i am still disciplined it's just you know like you said you're only giving percentages opposed to right. more that could be allocated and it's interesting too because a lot of like a lot of friends that i have that are millionaires they focus on a thing and master that thing and then that's what makes them the millionaire and then the thing that made them a millionaire is they continue to grow that or that's when they start branching out doing other things and then their net worth goes crazy and then they got all these different things they say millionaire has seven streams of income all this different different stuff like that so for me it's always interesting on that too because i'm like okay i can do a lot of things even within a certain niche of like what mm-hmm. is it gonna do to keep my millions and all this stuff because there's again so many factors of like uh, running properties and then on the social media side is a whole nother thing right but i'm like okay let me just pick a couple things and then master those because we know there's a lot of steps within all those things as well so it's hard to like take on more new stuff that it's like because there's a million ways to make a million dollars yeah but it's like okay we need to pick our way that works the best and so it's like you're collecting a dollar from each of those millions yeah you can go collect the half a million from one and right. half, it's like I would much rather put focus here in a smaller yeah. than to spread thin to do So that. how do you how do you go about like picking what the priority is because you have to prioritize now and later, right? Yeah. And sometimes people make money now, it's great for their monthly cash flow or uh this is going to be an investment for a long play and it's like I got to put it all in and I got to bootstrap it here or whatever to make it to there. So how do you kind of like prioritize that because right now it sounds like you're trying to like take on more things or like you just got a lot of things to worry about. So it's really, I'm at the point now where I've realized it for a long time, Mm -hmm. but it's just really just the action of doing it, cutting shit out. I mean, stuff out. It's like, Mm -hmm. that's where I'm at. It's really like, there is like, you can, to know and not do is to not know. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. cause you really didn't do nothing with it. So you might as well not know. Right. And so that's what it really boils down to. So it's like, and I have been acting on it. Like, so it's like every opportunity ain't my opportunity. Right. I used to think it was because yeah. I can do it. But now, now, so it's like. Well, especially with everything on the internet. Yeah. It's like, oh, we're going to start a trucking company and then we're going <laughs> to do this. We're going to get multifamily. Yeah. We're going to have tiny homes. So we're going to, you know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. so many different things. Yeah. I'm going to start a laundry, man. I need a storage container yeah. company. I need this. I need that. Like, and, yeah, it's and so it, many different options. And they all cost money and time. Yeah. And because they all cost money and time, they all cost a lot of money and a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Every single thing you named. Mm-hmm. Ain't none of that you could just allocate off the back unless you got the bread. Right. And so it's like because it they all, you're disrespecting the in- industry by thinking you could do them all. Right. That's what it really boiled down to. Mm-hmm. Like, it's somebody that's been doing that their whole life. And you think because you got the internet, you finna just, so, don't get me wrong, in. it's happened, but it don't happen every day. Right. And so the odds are, if you just finna hop in and think you finna do 10 different businesses at once mm-hmm. and never ran any of them successfully, that's just not, chances are it's not going to work that way. Right. Not saying you don't win at some, because some of those are probably your business that you're good at, but uh, you can't just see stuff. And, and, that, and that was a problem. It's like, you, and you know what another thing that the people don't talk about is, is all the millionaires that I know, 
none of them went out to started to be millionaires. They all just mastered something and right. became a millionaire as a byproduct. Right. And didn't even realize they was a millionaire. Like and that's it wasn't like, like oh I'm gonna be a millionaire tomorrow like but that that's another thing generationally like we grew up where we seen the millionaires and we seen the big contracts mm -hmm. and so we was like I want to be a millionaire mm -hmm. they grew up and was like I'm gonna get good at this profession mm -hmm. then it turns out to be a career that career turns into something they bought a couple of houses sold a couple of houses now they got some millions in the bank right they and look it's like up oh and they're like oh damn a hundred percent and that and that's the part of it like we look at it like a million dollars is the goal. They look at it a million dollars as a byproduct of what they put in the work to do. I'm gonna tell you right now, a million dollars. No, <laughs> a million no, dollars you know, ain't much. <laughs> well, you know, but I'm saying that. No, I get it. No, yeah, I'm but, saying. Yeah, but a million. Yeah, that's now, how it yeah. used to be, though. Yeah. Especially right now, like a million dollars <laughs> is not a lot of money. And it's and all relative. I don't care if people's in the comments say, like, "Oh, a million dollars." Yeah, no. But listen, you got <laughs> look. You got like we talking about Cincinnati. You go to Cincinnati, you could buy two city blocks for a million. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm just being relative. Like, you know, houses are 15,000. Yeah. So it's like, you know, but it's like, it's like you can't, if a million dollars or a millionaire is all you're after, it's a lot harder because you're not, you're not passionate about what you're doing sometimes right. to get there. If you'll just do anything to get there, you'll do anything to get there. And then you'll take whatever risk that thing. But, yeah. but when you're looking at it like, oh, wait, like you're going to do YouTube, you're going to do this stuff. And it's just like, right. oh, this just happened as a byproduct. Because I'm so good at what I do. Right. And then it just, you know, that's what it is. And so it's like, yeah, that's that that's a mi milestone. It's not the end goal. It's like, okay, like, I'll, you know, I'll get there. I'll, I'll continue to do what I need to do. And it, But it's like, I think that's our a lot of people's problem is they see the money. They see all of that. Yeah. And that's what they chase. Yeah. And then it's like, well, if you're chasing the money and that's your only thought process in it, you're not actually even thinking about a customer. You're not thinking about an audience. You're right. not thinking about... What they need, you're thinking like, oh, this is just an opportunity to make what money. What can I get from them? How many I got to move? Whatever. How many people do you know that got businesses that they don't care about? Right. That literally, they not even like, I ain't even say all your businesses got to be your baby. You got to just love and all of that. But like, they, some people I know, I know a lot of people that make money in businesses that goes against their morals. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't do this under your name. Right. But because you got some anonymity or whatever, you know what I mean? Right, right, right. Some, You're anonymous. <laughs> anonymity. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that's what I'm saying. Like, it's really like, you know, like that, that that's what I'm saying. Like the money is, yeah. that's the byproduct. Mm -hmm. And when we treat it like a byproduct, you just go do the work and that becomes it. And that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, that's why you, you're not thinking about becoming a millionaire. You are, but you're not thinking about it. Like, will it happen? You're like, I know I'm doing the work to get me there. Right. And then when you get there, you got to sustain it while growing it. If right. that still is, you know, like yeah. some people get to the millions and like, you know what? I'm cool. Mm -hmm. Like I know people that got millions right now and they cool, like a million or two. And they, they're at that age where they're like, I can live my years out and not need no more money. And I'm not like, I know somebody got millions and they got no kids, no family. Oh no uh, yeah. Dolo, and yeah. I'm just like retired. Just and it's like okay, like right. and he like he like I had, I'm a today. firm believer that like ten mil, ten <laughs> mil is like the until we get is it. <laughs> you, no, you hit it I, and no, like, but I think ten mil is like truly the new threshold. Like a mil used to be it, mm -hmm. but like people used to be like going crazy about making a hundred thousand dollars. Like if you make a hundred thousand in a year, like that was a lot. Now. In uh, most major cities, like you make a yeah. hundred thousand, it's like okay. And the you know what I'm saying? you know the craziest part is like a hundred. We we say it like that, but then eighty five percent of the people make less than sixty thousand. I know. So then you're like, wait, if it's if a cold game, you're like a hundred thousand is can because people say, oh yeah, you make a hundred thousand. How you live paycheck to paycheck, or how are you not making it? Right. And then when you break it down, and you're like, wait. A third of that's your living costs. A third of that is your overhead for your like everything mm -hmm. else that go. Like, and then they inflate their lifestyle too, so that's yeah. a big problem. But not even that though. Like, but, you, well, yeah, some you, cities. Like, rent right now is two grand. I know. A mortgage is three thousand. That's what I'm so, saying. It's so, a cold game. So let's say you making seven. Right. Seven is what you net on a hundred thousand. Most right. people. You if your mortgage or your house, let's say your, your utilities in your house cost you three thousand. Yep. You got. Don't get me wrong. You have in theory four thousand. In theory. You got, you got car insurance, you got a cell phone, you got food. You, you want got, to go out to eat a not, couple times a month. You ain't got to go out to eat. You That's get what I'm groceries. Bro, That's you what seen I'm groceries like, are up 100% since hopefully, 2020? Hopefully you can go out to eat a couple times and maybe take a couple vacations. Man, maybe. And that's, <laughs> what, but that's what, but so that's what I'm telling you. Like, it, it seems like people say like, oh yeah, 100,000 is a lot. Mm -hmm. It's perspective. You're, you know, in your market, 
the demographic, the average income may right. be forty thousand. So there, a hundred thousand goes a lot further, and then that's why you think about it that way. Mm -hmm. But you come to Seattle, bro, you can't live anywhere for under, you know, like yeah. I, like or New Portland, wherever you West Coast, anywhere, New York, yeah, bro, there are one bedroom apartments for twenty five hundred. Well, it's just so crazy, like looking at the charts, just seeing like how much real estate goes up and how much the income goes up, or should I say, even goes up. <laughs> but flat. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just it's so wild seeing that stuff, and it's like again why we like real estate right like investing in real estate because we see this over all these years from even before we were born like this is something we got to get into this is something that makes sense in the long haul and if anything if it all goes down like at least we got somewhere to stay <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that's my thing it's like i always my thought process is like i intend to have somewhere to stay at all times right right gonna cost me something right i'm in the position where i can buy so i did buy and it mm -hmm. made sense for me right and i like the control of the control monthly expense mm -hmm. you know what your mortgage is going to be your your taxes could go up later change a little bit but you know but for the most really part, don't change that yeah, much your payment cool. you know what your payment is your insurance all that stuff you know what that is i'm seeing these rent hikes that are eight hundred dollars right 750 that's like literally you, like people oh, I feel so bad too because I'm like that's crazy like people will just be living somewhere and they'll be like new ownership coming in they're like all right and and don't get me wrong I get it because a lot of stuff is under market rent and all that stuff you yeah. gotta market rent but some of the stuff it it doesn't pencil out for where you're at now yeah so if, you know like when I was in an apartment it was eight hundred dollars mm -hmm. if it would have stayed eight hundred I may not have been looking as quick to buy a house. Right. Because it was like, oh, you could, I could, my overhead is 800 and I've got but a room. They tried to do a bigger increase on you. No, yeah. That's what, what was that, the increase? They went, it went from 800 to like a thousand. And then a thousand to like, it was going to go to like almost 1400, which was like my new mortgage that I got. Damn. And so I was like, and that was in two years. Oh, damn. I was like, oh, no. And then, and it wasn't getting no bigger. It was yeah, nothing changed on the They inside. didn't fix it. They Everything didn't was, nah, they bro. fix it. Nothing. Nah, bro. And I was like, at that point, when I got in, it made financial responsibility to rent. Yeah. When it when it when it didn't, I got on. Right. And that was my thought. But I'm not saying it's for everybody, but it's like being in that position, I'm like, okay, I can buy. I I did buy. I found out the situation. It was like right. it only made sense for me. And that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of people don't look at it, it makes sense for them. And it's also a lot of people don't want to make the sacrifices that we made at the beginning to right. get to here. It's like, right. I didn't, I, man, I had a roommate. Didn't nobody like, but we all, everybody, people get a roommate Bro, in an apartment. When I got and the it's first like, house, when I got the first house, I was renting out the rooms. I didn't even move into the first house until like four months after I bought it. I was yeah. already, as soon as I got the keys, I gave it to them. I was like, here you go. Available. Yeah, and <laughs> like, renters already locked in before I even closed on the house. As soon as I put the offering and it got accepted, I was already looking for renters. Yeah. And I already had renters moving in day one. Yeah. And that makes a big difference. But it's like, it, it was like, I'm like, people are too much pride, too much ego in the way of all of this. But it's like, yeah. it, like I got, I, I was talking to somebody. I've been telling them to get a house. We've been, you know, for years. Mm hmm he just hit me the other day. He's like, bro, I'm getting my house. He this they, His story is crazy. He has a whole family. He's like, I'm getting my house. He's like, and then me and my boy, my he was like, we're going to, uh, I'm going to use my loan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get the house. And he's, we're going to partner up. He's going to fix it. And we're going to put our money together. And then, you know what I'm saying? Then I'll live in it. And then at once, and then in a year, I'll sell it or, two, you know, whatever we want to mm -hmm. do. But it's like, okay, one of you is in credit position to get it. Another has some money. Mm -hmm. You both may need a place to live. So then if you can come together and move into this house and right. live there, then you rise, you know, you created equity and then you, you know, whatever you need to do, so sell like it to you. Through, the contract and everything? They're in the process of it, yeah. Oh, okay. Like they got the loan, like they're they're on the point where he was like, like because they, they do rehabs. So like the for their day jobs, okay, it's okay. it's like it's like best friends that rehab for yeah, a company. Yeah. I got you. And they're like, we could do this together. Okay. And they're like, well, bet we could just get it. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, and that's the thing. He's like, okay, well, yeah, we you can move into it. So they got he got a plan. It doesn't nobody else fits this mold but them, and you know other people fit for it. Them. But yeah. yeah, like they created, yeah. it and it, it's not how I did it. I wouldn't have done it that way. Right. That's me, and that's what I'm telling other people. It's like just because I don't like it or I didn't, I don't I like that way. Yeah. I don't like it for me because yeah. I needed something else, and that's the other part of it. Like do for you what you need to do. I think that uh, getting into real estate, I don't know how to explain it, but it's hard and it's easy. Mm -hmm. It's easy once you find your lane. Yeah. 
yeah. once you find what's best for you and what you're trying to get but it's hard to figure out what's best for you so you got to go out and listen to all the podcasts listen to the stories talk to different people because again there's different loans for different people there's not just like three loans yeah and you only got this option and that option and this one they're rolling out new loans every year. They got different incentive packages. They got all different types of stuff. But that's where it comes to putting in the work, learning the stories, hearing people's scenarios, hearing situations, and then being like, okay, I could do this and that. Does that work together? I don't know. Well, this fits my lifestyle. And then you go in and start picking it apart. Just like if you was a, a wide receiver and you liked Antonio Brown and you liked Terrell Owens. Two completely different receivers, <laughs> yeah. completely different body types. At the end of the day, they're both good. Okay, what parts do you like about them? What do they have in common? Da, da, da. Like, and then you look at that and you're like, I'm going to be a receiver like this. And then you become so-and-so a receiver and you go to the NFL and do your thing. Yeah. It's like you do it that way. Or, I mean, there's just so many different, you know, examples to how it can happen. But there's always different options out there. And sometimes don't run away from the interest payments and it being too high and somebody talking you out of it because that might be your only option. Yeah. And if it works for you, it works for you. And that like, and, and all of that, it's like, that sums it up. Well, like all this boils down to is building relationships, getting in areas where you're, unco- you're unfamiliar, you're uncomfortable, mm-hmm. where you can grow and seeing what's out there. Mm-hmm. Like, and then like for me, how I helped all those people just, I like I say, help them buy houses. I use that loosely, but I just introduced them to all the information they needed to go do their work. Mm-hmm. They still have work on their end to do. Mm-hmm. But all I did was use a collection of other people. Right. I like I, exactly what you just said is I listen to podcasts. I listen to the stuff I've been through. I've helped other people. And I said, oh, okay, you want this the outcome you need? Right. Let's do it backwards. Yeah. And that, that, that's how I live life. Even for me, like, I, like when I talk to those people, I use those life lessons mm-hmm. to build what I need to go. So it's all, all about that using the access that you have and then getting extra access that you don't have that you need. Right. Yeah. The, <laughs> the internet is very powerful right now. There's a lot of stuff on there. Again, double back, do research again on what people are talking about because a lot of people will be saying stuff and then it may not be right. And then yeah. you're following some path that may not be correct as well. So there's a lot of that as well. But there is a lot of good information out there on the internet, especially for free as well. Um, okay. Do you want to keep going? Do you want to do you want to hit them with the final statement? What you want to do? Uh, we can do a final statement. Okay. So what would you... Oh, we got to do the fire round. I'm tripping. Okay. Greatest shoe of all time. Flint Nines. Flint Nines? Flint Nines. That's a good one. OG. That's they haven't favorite. even retro those yet. That's my favorite shoe ever. Hey, that is. How many times have I helped you get those? Three? How many pairs do I got? I don't know. He <laughs> said, like, I got all of them for you. Every five, time I found six, a pair, I always send them his way. I, I still got every pair. That's what's I got, up. I got all of those and another three. <laughs> okay. Um, how many pairs of shoes do you have in your collection? Uh, now I'm down to probably 70. Okay. He's on the get rid of it all phase, but keep the good stuff tight. Dumping in. it. He's like, I'm letting it go. But I, listen, I'm making a profit. Yeah. There's a business lesson in there, y'all. I'm making profits on all of these shoes. Nah, for real. You're doing good. And um, if you could wear one shoe, if you had to wear one shoe for the rest of your life, what would it be? Sock dart. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> hey, he loves the sock darts. If you guys don't know about sock darts, they're kind of like Prestos. They're really, really comfortable. Great shoe. A lot of people sleep on those. I, I compare them to like a croc with a strap, like across it. Like they feel they're like- They're way softer on the front, on the top though. Like that mesh, yeah. They're like a sock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so if you were to tell your young 16-year-old self something and, you know, what would you tell him? What would you go back and tell him right now? This next 15 years is going to be far from easy, but it's going to pan out. Because it was was some thugging years in the 15, but (laughs) it all works out. And I'm not not even like I'm at the point where it worked out. It just just works out. As a whole, that's what I tell him. It just works out, bro. Just keep, keep fighting the good fight. It'll work out. Okay. I like it. I appreciate it. Thanks for popping on. You know what I'm saying? We new out here with the podcast. (laughs) Anytime. Hopefully this thing goes crazy one day. We're going to see. (laughs) I I hope, you know, somebody decide to, you know, get uncomfortable. You know, I'm not saying go buy a house after this, but I am saying that. But I am saying just, you know, don't be be afraid to get uncomfortable if it helps you grow. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that's what this pod is. It just introduces you to other people, yep. different walks of life that you had no idea existed. And you say, wait, it's possible to do that? Yep. And then now you are down a whole nother track. Oh, yeah. For me, I'm excited because I, so I was just telling someone, I'm like, I could know somebody, but I could get to know them deeper uh, and more uh, and learn more about them or what they do from this podcast. Because you don't just get to sit down with somebody for an hour or two hours and have these conversations like this because yeah. everybody be busy in life and everything. So I'm excited for it. I can't wait. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Don't forget to hit that follow button, download it. I don't know how to use these podcast <laughs> app platform stuff, but if you guys are listening, I appreciate you follow, subscribe, whatever the button is that you push on there. <laughs> All right. We out. I'll see y'all in another one or hear y'all in another one. <laughs>